Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This story is called, A Medic Helped Me Become the Next Kami no Shinobi. If you enjoy this story, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now for the story. Please don't die. Just don't die. Sonate begged, pumping chakra into Naruto's heart. She couldn't let Naruto die before he accomplished his dream. Shizen was holding back some tears. She grew fond of Naruto, especially after their conversation about Sonate's past. When she found out he wanted to win the necklace just to take away her sensei's burden, her respect and admiration for him grew. He even protected Tsunade and her from Kabuto's onslaught. How could someone be so selfless? Naruto kun please be all right. Shizen thought, looking at the blonde laying on the ground. Finally, that nuisance is gone. You should be thanking me. Now the Akatsuki plans are ruined, Orochimaru said. Tsunade looked up at the snake Sanin and glared at him, her killing intent rising causing both Jiraiya, Kabuto, and Orochimaru to shiver in fear. Why do I feel scared? She's nothing compared to me, and yet. Naruto woke up, looked around, and saw he was in the sewer. Oh great, I'm here again. Naruto said, looking at the cage and saw the fox laying down depressed. What's the matter with you? I'm sick of your kind. The Kyuubi said, surprising Naruto. You treat my kind like monsters, but you'll use our power like we're weapons. You kill just like we do. The only thing different between my kind and yours is our size. Naruto was quiet and looked at the fox confused and with sympathy. Where's this coming from all of a sudden? I always thought about this, until I saw you. Even though you had a taste of my power, you never abused it, you experienced hatred but don't want revenge. You're different. Because I don't want to hate. To be honest, I don't hate you, but I blame you for my life. At the same time, we both didn't ask to be here. Since you feel like talking, Tell me why did you attack our village? Because I was forced to. I was put under a Jinjutsu then started to rampage in the village where the masked man summoned me. I was just trying to break it. I just happened to cause damage in the process. Naruto's eyes widened at the confession and for once he was quiet. He wanted to refute but he somehow knew the fox was telling the truth. Naruto felt like scum. He blamed the fox just like the villagers. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have blamed you. The fox smiled. In truth he knew how the boy would react and he was happy he was right. Now he wouldn't regret what he would do. I appreciate it, but I can't stand it anymore. I want to be free, and there's only one thing I can do. Kuruma put his hand on the cage, and it started to glow gold. Unknown to Naruto, the seal was meant to purify Kuruma chakra and give it to Naruto. Kuruma was just enhancing it a bit. What are you doing? Naruto asked. Kuruma had tears coming out his eyes. To Naruto, it looked like he was in pain. Stop. You're hurting yourself. The QB smiled. Consider this a gift. And save my breathing from the mask one. Oh, and my name is Karuma. The QB said before disappearing. The sewer started to vibrate and the whole area turned white. Naruto looked around and he was surrounded by an open sky and standing on a light blue sea, his chakra. He looked up in the sky and saw a glowing bright yellow-orange sphere leaking a glowing stream into the blue sea and some sea water was going into the sphere. Kuruma, where are you? Kuruma. Naruto cried out. He didn't know why he felt sad that the fox was gone, maybe because it was a part of him, or maybe it was pity. Outside the blonde's mindscape, he was currently in a hotel lying in the lap of Sanade who was caressing his locks. His vitals were normal but he still hasn't woken up and it's been hours. She was rubbing his cheeks smiling. Damn Gaki. Got me worried and attached. Ka-chan. Naruto mumbled sleep, nuzzling his head in Sanade's hand. Sanade's heart skipped a beat. She never had a chance to be a mother because her fiancé died and hearing Naruto say that brought a feeling she never felt before. She couldn't help but smile. She thought about adopting him at that moment. Jiraiya told her about his life in the village, and she was quite disappointed in the villagers and the council, not to mention her sensei even though he was gone. You know, you two do look like mother and son. Sanade looked up at Shizen, blushing a storm. Shizen walked up to the two and looked at Naruto. He's done so much for us in the little time we've known him, and he's just a genin. The hardship he went through because of his burden, I think you and him should establish a relationship like a mother to a son. You two both lost family and your clans are distant cousins, plus you two don't look that much different. Sonate sighed. It's not that I don't want to, I just don't know how he would feel. I always wanted a family but... But nothing my lady, it's time to move on. And as for Naruto Kuen, I have a sneaky suspicion he would want it as much as you. Shizen said with a smirk, looking down at the blonde. Sanade looked down and saw Naruto was awake with tears in his eyes. You really wouldn't mind having me as a son? 
Naruto asked with a hopeful expression. Sanade looked at the boy, there was no way she could say no to that face. Plus if she was honest, she wanted it too. Sure as long as I can be your mother, Naruto sent you. Sanade said, Naruto's eyes widened and smiled. Naruto Uzumaki was no more. Sanade put her necklace around his neck. I'm glad to see you're all right, Gaki. Everyone turned to Jiraiya, who just walked into the room. I thought you might have been communicating with the fox since your healing factor is faster. Naruto's eyes shot open. That's right. Pervy Sage, the fox is gone. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. What do you mean he's gone? Naruto looks down in guilt. The fox hated humanity and destroyed himself by trying to force himself in through the cage. He said he gave me a gift, but I don't feel any different. Jiraiya was quiet, contemplating what he was told. Sanade was happy that her, now adopted son, didn't have to live with the burden and Shizen was relieved. I believe it's to head back to the village and form a plan. Sanade narrowed her eyes. Jiraiya was acting weird. It was almost like he was upset. I guess you're right. Plus, I kinda miss the village. So have I, Naruto-kun. May you show me around? Shizen asked. Naruto gave her a foxy grin and nodded. Sure, maybe we can head to Ichirakus. Naruto offered. Shizen smiled and nodded. On the way back to the village, Naruto and Shizen were getting along well, engaging in multiple conversations, exchanging life stories. Shizen was concerned for the blonde. From what she understood from the information she learned from Naruto, he didn't have proper education, he was constantly attacked, his teammates were terrible and most of his friends were jerks. She made a mental note to talk to her sensei about this. After greeting the chunins at the gate, they walked through the village. Shizen was looking at the villagers glaring at her new favorite blonde, and if she was honest, she was quite disappointed. When the group walked up to the office door and opened it, the two elders were there smiling. Greeting Sanade-sama, welcome back to the village. Kohara said, bowing alongside Hamura. Sanade narrowed her eyes, she heard what these two did to her new son but she held her tongue. Thank you honorable elders. Shizen, you and Naruto head out to the village and set up our home. Now we can get onto the situation regarding the village repairs in order and we finally take care of this demon. Kohara said, glaring at the blonde as he left. Sanade narrowed her eyes. Excuse me, but demon, are you talking about? Sanade asked. The elders closed the door behind them and turned to Sanade. Do you Zumaki brat, do you honestly think a small boy can hold the power of the QB? Koharu asked. Yes, I do, and allow me to correct a few errors you said. Sanade said, walking around the desk and sitting down. First of all, let me ask you something. Are you aware of the Uzumaki clan? But of course, one of our greatest allies that existed. Hamura responded. Sanade nodded. Yes, the Uzumaki clan was masters at the sealing art, and me being part of the clan, it kinda upsets me that you doubt their sealing technique performed on Naruto. Sanade said, confusing the two elders. What do you mean? The Yandame was the one who sealed. Yes, I know. Sanade said, cutting Koharu off. But the Jutsu was originally from the Uzumaki clan. Mito Uzumaki taught it to the first and second Hokage. What you don't know, if anyone outside our clan performs that Jutsu, the Reaper Death Seal, their life is forfeit. I understand, but what are you getting at? The fourth wasn't in Uzumaki, so he obviously used a weaker sealing jutsu. Kohara said. Wrong. The Yandame wasn't Uzumaki, but he was married to one. Kushi Uzumaki, how do you think the Yandame gained his knowledge of seals? Because of Kushina, Minato was able to learn the Horation. The Yandame used a S-rank sealing jutsu on the QB, with the power of the Grim Reaper at the cost of his soul. The fox with all his strength couldn't break the seal. The boy is still dangerous, as long as the QB is in him. He's a threat to the village, Kohara said with a smirk. Sanade saw this and returned it. Good thing the fox is gone. The elders looked confused. You see, Minato set up a fail-safe. Just in case the fox tries to escape, the seal would kill the fox. On my return mission, Naruto fought Kabuto to save me and the fox tried to force himself through the seal but it backfired by destroying him, ridding him of this world. That can't be. Without the fox, the village will seem weak, Hamura said. Sanade cocked an eyebrow. But is this what you cowards wanted? You are so afraid of Naruto that made his life a living hell. In fact, you civilians are so heartless, y'all should consider yourselves the real demon. Sanade said. What if the demon brat is suppressing his power to trick you? After all, Uzumaki is very cunning. Just like a fox. Hamura said. Sanade gritted her teeth and couldn't take it. There's another thing you should know. Naruto Uzumaki is no more. 
As of a few days ago, he became Naruto Senju, my new heir. I sent a message to the daimyo, and it was approved. The elders paled and soon they would turn white after Sonade's next words. Now that Naruto's my heir, his father and mother clan inherit, which means only he and I can have access to it. The elders were seething. They prevented Naruto from being adopted to gain access to his funds and have more control over him. Unfortunately, thanks to Minato, a Sanin was allowed to adopt with only the permission from the daimyo. Seeing their faces caused Sonade to smirk. Now that's out of the way, call a council meeting. Time to inform everyone of my return and my Sochi's new condition. It's been a week since Sonade arrived. She healed Naruto and Sasuke. She had Naruto settled in their new home. Sonade grew attached to Naruto really fast and Naruto never felt any happier. To finally have a family, it was a nice feeling. Sonade was going over the reports in her new office on the village repairs when Shizen walked in looking sad. Shizen, what's with the matter? Shizen signed and decided to get this over with. My lady, you asked me to go over the reports of the Chunin exams, and I only found one person who was good enough to become a Chunin. Shikamaru Nara. Sonade signed and frowned. She was hoping her son would be good enough to be promoted, but she guessed it wasn't time. I guess Naruto needs more training. He needs more than that. Sonade listened and allowed Shizen continue. This is his academy record. I think you should go over it. Sonade took the files and read through them. She was shocked at what she was looking at. This is atrocious. Why was he allowed to become a genin like this? The fact that he was able to accomplish so much is amazing. I think it was because of the QB. Besides Kiba-san, he used the fox chakra in the majority of his fights and... Now that it's gone, he has no clutch to make up for his lack of skill. Sonade knew what she had to do but it would hurt the blonde. I have no choice but it's for his safety and his own good. Unbu, bring Naruto Senja to my office. And Unbu appeared out of the shadows and disappeared. After 15 minutes, Naruto walked in with his foxy smiling. Hi Ka-chan, you wanted to see me. Sonade's heart felt warm from the title but she then remembered why she called him, which caused her heart to break. Naruto, I want you to calm yourself and pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Naruto heard the seriousness in her voice and nodded. I went over your files and you are under the standard strength level for a genin, as Hokage, and your mother, I have to take your headband from you. You have no taijutsu style, chakra control is bad, vocabulary is bad, your grades are terrible and weapon throwing skills are decent at best. Naruto's eyes widened and small tears were slowly coming out. But that's not, I mean. Sochi, please, I'm not done. I know your dream is to become Hokage, and you know how much I love you. I can't lose you like Nawaki. So I'm going to put you on a probationary period for two months. In that time, I want you to correct and improve yourself. I know it's not your fault. I've heard about how the Academy neglected you and so has your team. You can still become Hokage. I just don't want you to die. Naruto absorbed everything he was told. He hated to admit, but he knew she was right. Plus she was his mother. He was sure this was hurting her. He signed and looked down at the ground. I understand. He took off his headband and necklace, proceeding to hand it over towards his mom. Sonade slowly took it and turned to her son. He looked like he had given up on life, but she knew she had to do her best to fix it. Oh, I know. How about I find you a tutor? What about Kakashi, Karinai, or Asuma? Naruto shook his head. Kakashi Sensei only trains the team and Asuma is lazy, according to Shikamaru. Plus he still has his own team. Karina I only knows Genjutsu and a few moves I guess, but I couldn't take teammate teacher. Oh, how about Pervy Sage? Sonade eyes narrowed in anger. I've been trying to get a hold of that pervert, but he's been acting weird. Ever since we returned, he's been ignoring my calls. The two blondes were quietly trying to find someone that would teach her son. What about me? The blondes turned to Shizen. I know more than the basics. I'm a well-rounded shinobi, and I wouldn't slack off when it comes to Naruto Kuen. I won't take it easy. And plus, I always wanted to be a student. Sonade stared at her assistant and smiled. Shizen had all her knowledge, and she was well-versed in ninjutsu. Plus, she could beat some manners into her son. I accept, Narachan. Shizen is very knowledgeable, and I know she will commit to your studies and training. Who knows, you may also learn some medic ninjutsu. Naruto gave her a look of disbelief. No thanks, it sounds kinda boring, and I can't even learn it because... Naruto stopped and realized he wasn't a Jinchuriki no more. Sonade smirked at his realization. You weren't able to learn because the fox was messing with your control. Not only that, but after analyzing you, your chakra level spiked up more than ever. Plus, medical ninjutsu is not boring. 
it takes a lot of dedication. Sonate informed her son, but he still didn't buy it. So she decided to use another method. Did you know Ichokage before me had a specialty? What do you mean, Ka-chan? Well, the first Hokage was a specialist in the Mokutan and Medic Ninjutsu. In fact, he was so great, he was able to heal himself during battle. The second was gifted in Suita Ninjutsu and Kenjutsu, plus he created majority of the ninjutsu we use today. My sensei master every ninjutsu and earned the name the professor and your hero. The fourth was a master of Fuinjutsu and was said to be the fastest to ever walk the earth. But they also knew the village history and politics, which you lack. So please consider what type of Hokage you want to be. Naruto listened carefully, and Shizen, who was quiet, decided to speak. Naruto Kuen, I believe you can surpass all the other Kages. You never had anyone who gave you time to help you. I'm not going to ignore or abandon you. You help us against Orochimaru, so allow me to help you. Naruto looked at both the females and gave them a genuine smile, not a foxy smile, a real one. Thank you, Shizen chan. I won't let you down. Naruto said. Shizen blushed and returned the smile. Sonate was looking at the two from her desk. She noticed for the past few weeks that her student was looking at the blonde in a certain way. Does she have a thing for him? Well, now that is settled, Shizen, you take Naruto back to our compound and set up a schedule. I'll inform his team of the change. Oh, and Narachan. Yes, Ka-chan? Now you are relieved of your burden. After your training, we should announce it to the village. Maybe things will change. With your permission, of course. Naruto didn't even think of that. But for some reason, he didn't care about the villagers' opinion. If you want but you, and Shizenchan love is all I need. Naruto said, then blushed at the later mention. Sonate smirked. It seems Narachan grew fond of Shizen as well. Shizen walked over to Naruto and grabbed his hand. Let's get going, naruto Kuen. We got a long two months ahead. Naruto's face was now crimson at the contact as both proceeded to their home. Few minutes after arriving, Shizen and Naruto were at the table making a list of the training exercises she was going to train Naruto in. Okay, Naruto Kuen, we're going to be mostly doing physical training the first week, which consists of physical conditioning and taijutsu sparring. This will be from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Next, we will meditate to calm your mind for about 30 minutes. At 9:30 to 11:30 a.m., we'll work on your chakra control. Afterwards, we will have lunch. Also, while you are doing physical training. You'll have Kage Bunshin to study the materials you'll need to know, like history and the making of the village and Fuinjutsu, since you want to surpass the Yandame. Shizen said. In truth, she wanted Naruto to learn the art to honor his clan, so using it as a way to surpass a Kage would motivate her blonde pupil. You got it, but why am I using Kage Bunshin? How will that help? Naruto asked. Shizen resisted the urge to smack her face. How could Kakashi not Jiraiya tell a Jinin? who can make a thousand clones, the benefits of making clones. Okay, Naruto Kuen, make a clone, and I'll make one. Then we will send them out. Even though he was confused, he did as instructed, and made a clone. Shizen did as well and made a clone. The Kage Bunshins walked out the door, and after a few minutes, Naruto blushed up a storm and started to sputter out of control and hold his cheek. I, uh, you kissed me, Naruto said. Shizen smiled. How did you know that? What do you mean? You kissed me outside, what but? My bunshin went outside, how did I? Naruto's eyes shot open in realization. My clone memories? That's right, you Kage bunshin would do all the studying, while you train physically. Once your clones are done with the study, they'll work on chakra control for you, and if you do well, next month we can start element manipulation and you're still thinking of the kiss aren't you? Naruto nodded blushing a bit, causing Shizen to sigh. It's not a big deal, you have to concentrate. Well, I can't help. I usually get hit by girls. It feels nice getting kissed by a girl, especially one as beautiful as you. Naruto whispered the last part. Shizen blushed up a storm. He thinks I'm beautiful. Shizen coughed into her hand and tried to compose herself, or at least tried. She was smiling on the inside and the best part, she hadn't unsealed her assets. Anyway, we will begin your studies tomorrow in Naruto Kuen. Naruto gave her his attention. I believe in you. She said kissing him on the cheek again. That was for the compliment. Naruto stared into space blushing up a storm and started chuckling like an idiot. Shizen giggled a bit, especially since she never had such an effect on a guy. She actually felt beautiful for once. Sonade started Team 7 after informing them about Naruto's probation. Kakashi signed and shook his head disappointingly. Sakura was annoyed but Sasuke was smirking. Now the dope won't get in the way of my training. 
Sanade eyed them carefully. She could tell none of them cared about what she told them, and it disappointed her. But it helps her think about what would happen in two months after Naruto's training is done. She made a mental note not to throw in some list of things STO Naruto to learn. That way she can show this village not to mess with her Sochi. Naruto just woke up, and he was wearing a tank top and some training shorts. He was currently sitting at a table waiting for his new sensei to give his breakfast. Shizen came out of the kitchen with a plate of omelette, bacon, and a muffin. Naruto-kun, to begin your training, we're going to change your diet and eating habits. Naruto gave her a confused look. What's wrong with my eating habits and my diet? Shizen signed and sat across Naruto. Naruto, your diet consists of mostly ramen, and you may not know it, but it's been stunning your growth. Don't want Sakura to like you? You have to change yourself. Naruto blushed, then frowned at the memory of her hugging Sasuke when Naruto brought Tsunade to heal the emo. Sakura didn't even acknowledge him, let alone thank him. She likes the team, she will never like me. In fact, no one would. Shizen frowned. That's the problem with fangirls. They like the dark, mysterious guy, but they don't know that can bite them. Nothing good ever comes out dating guys like that. I would rather date someone kind heart and put an effort to those they care about. Someone who is selfless and can make me feel comfortable being around them. Someone like. Shizen paused and turned to Naruto. She blushed a bit, confusing Naruto. Anyway, after you eat, we're going to put some weights on you. And we are going to jog around the village. We? As in the both of us? Naruto asked. Of course, we're going to train together. Plus, I've been kinda rusty myself. I can get back in shape a bit. So let's work together. Shizen. Naruto smiled and nodded. Even though they just started, she was already doing better than Kakashi. Now make some clones for them to study. Just five should be enough. I left some books in your room. The weights and some training clothes are upstairs as well. After you get changed, meet me down here. Hi, Sensei. Naruto said before running up the stairs to his room, he saw some weights and some jogging shorts with a zip up hoodie. He put the shorts weights on his legs and arms, but for some reason, it felt light. He then put on his orange hoodie and went downstairs. When he arrived, he was blushing up a storm because he saw Shizen wearing black tight workout shorts and a sports bra with a blue zip-up hoodie. Whoa, you look, wow. Huh, something's different about you. Shizen turned to the blonde and blushed. She wore a triple layer that shortened her chest per layer. By taking off a layer, she was a B-cup at the moment. She then noticed how toned he was. But when she heard the compliment, her face darkened. Thanks, you look nice too. Now let's head outside the gate. A few minutes later, they were out the gate doing some stretches outside the gate of Kanoha. They both had weights on their legs and arms. Shizen had a 100 pounds on each of her limbs, while Naruto's 150 on each. Now Naruto kuin, when we run, we are going to add chakra to our legs and arms. It helps strengthen our limbs. By doing this, we are going to work another chakra control exercise. But how with my control? Well, while we're jogging, you and I are going to speed up with our chakra, but you have to use just the right amount of chakra to stay at my side. You can't pass me and you can't slow down. As you get used to it, I'll either add more or less chakra to get you to adjust faster. Every time you mess up, there will be another lap. Oh, I see. Can we get started? Naruto asked excitedly. Sure, on my mark. Naruto and Shizen bent down in a running position. Set. Go. They both took off at a decently fast pace. The two spent the next two hours running around the village. Shizen was impressed. Even though Naruto wasn't a Jinchuriki anymore, he had a lot of stamina. She mixed it up by trying to add more chakra at once and stopping her chakra flow to trick the blonde. After running 50 laps around the village, they did some standard exercises, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, and 100 pull-ups. After all that, Shizen was more tired than Naruto. Naruto Kuen has all that stamina. I wonder. Shizen paused her train of thought and blushed up a storm, but because of that thought she was admiring well-toned body. Because of the jumpsuit she couldn't see it, but Naruto was well-built for his age. Unknown to the medic, Naruto was admiring her as well. Even though it was supposed to be disgusting, the sweat going down her body, especially the few drops between her chest. What's going on with me? I was supposed to like Sakura, but Shizen-chan is nicer to me and she. Naruto thought admiring Shizen's body, he had to admit. Without the kimono, she looks hotter. Shizen and his eyes met, and she gave him a warm smile, causing his heart to skip a beat. And she believes in me. At that moment, Shizen. Sensei, I promise not to let you down. I'll put in 200% effort, Databeo. Shizen's eyes widened at the exclamation and smiled. I know you won't, Naruto-kun. 
Since you already know water walking and tree climbing, we're going to do a combination of the two. I'm going to show you how to run up a waterfall. I'll be honest, even though I have trouble with this, so I'll practice right beside you. Shizen said. After all, what kind of sensei would I be if I just sat down and did nothing? Kakashi sensei. Naruto answered, causing the two to laugh. Shizen respected Kakashi, but she had to admit that he did poorly with her new best friend. She would put maximum effort into Naruto. While Shizen was training Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were waiting for the sensei. Sasuke was excited, even though he grew fond of the blonde as a rival, without him more training for him, especially since he thought his pink hair teammate wasn't going to train. Sakura was thinking about her blonde teammate. She didn't understand why Lady Sanade wanted Naruto to correct himself now. Sure she knew he was sloppy, but he pulled through multiple situations like beating Niji, Kiba, and Gara. He also beat Haku with Sasuke help of course. Uh, where is Kakashi Sensei? Sasuke didn't say anything since he was used to this treatment. Sakura signed, if she was honest, she didn't think Sasuke would answer. Hello my kawaii jinin. Ready for a mission? Sasuke cocked an eyebrow. What about training? Now, now Sasuke. We still need to work on your teamwork, so we will be doing some D-rank missions, especially since the village still needs to be repaired. Sasuke grunted. Sakura noticed and decided to try and cheer him up. Maybe we can train after Sensei? Well, we'll see. Kakashi said, giving them an eye smile. Damn, I wish Naruto was here. At least we can spar. This is a waste of time, Sasuke complained and walked away. Kakashi signed as he and Sakura followed behind him. Later that night, Sanade joined the two for dinner. But ASD they were eating, Shizen could tell that her master had something on her mind, especially since she kept glancing at Naruto. Sochi. Naruto stopped eating and looked at his adoptive mother. Yes, Ka-chan? Sanade smiled. Every time he called her that, it just warmed her heart. I was wondering if we should tell your friends about you being a former Jinchuriki? Naruto's eyes widened, but he was afraid since the fox was dead, but he was still confused as to why. Sanade noticed and answered his unasked question. You see, your teammate are going to ask why are we correcting yourself now, and since you're not a Jinchuriki, I was thinking of announcing to the village that you're not a Jinchuriki, and you are my son. Maybe the villagers will start treating you better. Naruto smiled. I don't mind you telling them, and if the villagers still treat me badly, at least I have you and Shizen Chan. Oink oink. Sorry, and you too, Tauntin. Shizen and Sanade chuckled at the interaction and continued to finish their food. Three days later, Naruto was in his trunks waiting for his new favorite sensei at the Sinja Complex waterfall created by Sanade's uncle. Today, he was going to learn to walk up a waterfall. Right now, he decided to meditate, something Shizen taught him. Speaking of which, where is she? Naruto asked himself, looking towards the house. Shizen was looking down at her wrapped chest, and she signed. She hit her chest to make sure guys would like her for her. She saw how people looked at Sanade, and she didn't want that. But unfortunately, when she started to look flat, people thought she looked plain. She wore a robe that hit her ass, and it just made it worse. Then started to smile when she thought about Naruto. Even with the binds, he called me beautiful. He even blushed when I tease him. Maybe I can win his heart. She slowly reached for her bindings. If I take this off, I swore an oath to Naruto that I have him and pursue no one else. Plus he deserves it. She removed the binds and her chest went from A to D cups. She then put on her one piece. It was a black one piece with green lines on each side and her back was exposed. She walked outside to meet Naruto and saw him meditating. She smiled in pride and decided to make herself known. Naruto Kuen, I'm here. Sorry I took so long. Naruto opened his eyes and was about to speak, but when he saw Shizen, his voice was caught in his throat and started to blush. Maybe I can tease him a bit. How do I look? I know I'm plain. No. You look great. I mean, hey, there's something about you. You look. What's that word? Oh, Exodus. Naruto said, causing the raven-haired medic to blush. Plus she was shocked when he didn't notice her chest size change. Naruto Kuen, you may not have noticed but. Shizue started then folded her arms under her chest. This is my natural size. Naruto's eyes widened as he blushed and turned away. Sorry, I didn't notice. Shizen sighed. She was so nervous and he didn't notice. How could you not notice? I was nervous and this is how you react. Most guys would be ogling me. Well, they're nothing but perverts who can't see a woman's true value. And I always noticed you, Shizen Chan. You are one of the nicest people I know. I don't care about breast size because if I did, I wouldn't have a crush on Sakura. You are beautiful and smart and... 
Naruto stopped and blushed. Shizen wasn't faring well. She was going to try to slowly worm her way in his heart, but he was affecting her. She decided to step up her game and walked towards the blonde and kissed him on the cheek. Thanks for the compliment, Naruto kun Shizen said with a warm smile. Naruto was flustered but returned it. They soon began their training. Later that night, Sanade arrived home expecting dinner, but the kitchen was empty. She went outside to the training ground and what she saw caused her to smirk. Naruto and Shizen were sleeping against a tree truck with Naruto's head on Shizen's shoulder. Shizen's head was on Naruto's head, but what really surprised her was the fact that Shizen's chest was exposed. She remembered about her apprentice oath, and she realized that Shizen saw something in Naruto. I approve. Tsunade thought before making a clone to carry Naruto, while she carried Shizen into their rooms. Two weeks have passed since Naruto started correcting himself with the help of Shizen. As Shizen was training herself alongside the blonde, whenever she wasn't around Naruto or Tsunade, she was angry. Why? Well, while training Naruto, she saw how he grasped anything he learned with ease, which made her think how strong he would have been if someone put attention into the blonde early. Also, she learned that he had a passive mental kekiai jinkai called Hosen Essay Red Arabiarari, stored library. In Kosho Bunsuki, breakdown analysis. He could remember anything he read and break down a jutsu or seal and analyze for a weakness, which explained his clan's expertise with seals. Sanade announced to the villagers Naruto's former status and new status as her son. Some villagers were stupid enough not to believe such accusation until a few Hugas and mind walkers entered the blonde's mind, confirmed the fox was dead. The villagers began to cheer but Naruto didn't care, since he still had bad memories of the villagers' treatment. But what disappointed Shizen was the words of some of Naruto's friends. Flashback asterisk. Shizen was in the market shopping for dinner. Ever since she removed her bandages, like a moth to a flame, she was receiving attention from multiple guys, but her heart was set on her favorite blonde teddy bear. The two have grown close since they started training together. Shizen would make bintos and sometimes ramen. Naruto wanted to learn how to cook for her. Shizen loved how Naruto was dedicated to put in the best effort for her even in the littlest things. I'm sorry Sasuke Kuen, just a few more weeks until the baka is back. Shizen snapped out her thoughts and turned to the Akimichi barbecue restaurant and saw some of the rookies when Ino spoke. Tist, like you understand. I'm stuck doing chores because of that failure. To think he had the QB inside him to help him cheat his way to being a shinobi. Sasuke said. That would explain how that loser beat me in Akimaru. After all, he's a dead last and a cheater. Kiba added. You're wrong Kiba-san. Kiba turned Niji who had his eyes closed. You might think he used it against you but he didn't because if he did, he would have been able to move as fast as when he fought me. Plus, I don't see why you and the Uchiha are complaining. You have your dog and the Uchiha has his eyes. We are shinobi and allowed to use whatever we can to our advantage. Niji defended. Yeah, right. There's no way the dobe could have beaten me without the help. Kiba retorted. Well, I for one respect him, to have such a burden placed on him, and not turned out like that Gara guy is admirable. Niji said. What do you mean? I like Naruto, but he always struggled. Maybe he should just give up being a shinobi. I'll hate to see him get hurt. Choji said. Well, if that happens, Sasuke and I would be stuck like this forever. He should just give up being a shinobi and Hokage. He will always be a baka, right Sasuke Kuen? Sakura said. Shizen was seething. How could this fangirl say something like that when she hadn't made it past the preliminaries? Tinin narrowed her eyes at the pinquette. How could you say that? He's your teammate. He was treated like an outcast and was ignored. If anything, it's everyone else's fault for ignoring him. TSCH, like I need the dweeb. Sasuke said. Well, I hope we get another teammate since he keeps getting in our way. Sakura said, agreeing with her crush. And that's my point. Everyone turned to Niji. You forgot that there was another Jinchuriki at the exams, where lucky Naruto didn't end up like him. Who are you talking about, Niji-san? Ino asked. Troublesome girl. He's talking about Gara. Everyone shivered at the thought. Gara was a psychopath because he gave his demon control because of the depression he had gained growing up. You guys may not know this, but apparently Gara had the one tail and there are seven more since the QB is dead. Now imagine if Naruto, who had the strongest demon, did what Gara had done. Everyone but Niji and Shikamaru paled at the thought. Regardless, Naruto never should have become a ninja in the first place if he needed help from the QB to win all his battles. Sakura said. Shizen was angry at Kiba. You know, Sakura in the emo, as Naruto calls him. Plus Hanada didn't even defend him. Isn't she supposed to like him? Even though she was planning on taking him for herself. 
Shizen knew right then, and there it was time to step up Naruto's training. Flashback end. Shizen was approaching the training ground with a couple scrolls. In the first two weeks, he mastered every chakra control exercise, kanai balance, waterfall walking, leaf balancing, tree walking, and water walking. He passed every written test she gave him, and his kanai throwing was amazing. Since she had extra time, she decided to teach him element manipulation. When she arrived at the private training ground and saw multiple Naruto's doing different exercises, she was always impressed by how many he could make, how safe those clones are. I wonder if they would be good for. Shizen blushed up a storm. No perverted thoughts, at least not yet. Naruto Kuen. Naruto stopped sparring with his clones and dispelled them. Yes, Shizen Sensei, the blonde responded, turning to his new crush. Since you progressed so far, I thought we might start with elemental manipulation. I believe you are ready for it. Shizen told her student. But isn't elemental manipulation a jonin level exercise? Naruto asked. Shizen smiled with pride. Before his training, he wouldn't even ask questions and just train, but now he was patient and more wise. Instead of jumping into the next lesson, he wanted to make sure he mastered everything he learned. Yes, I believe you are. You may not have realized this, but you accomplished high chunin feats on your own without help. You more than polished off your skills, and now if I had to guess a level you might be at, it would be mid. Hi, Chunin. Naruto blushed at her smile and nodded in pride. Okay, so what's first? Stijin pulled out some chakra paper. We are going to check what our affinity is by pouring chakra into it. If it splits, your affinity is wind. If it crumbles, it's earth. If it burns, it's fire. If it wrinkles, it's lightning. And if it gets wet, it's water. Sweet. So what's your affinity to Shizen Sensei? Naruto asked. Actually, to be honest, I don't know. When I first became a ninja, all I learned was chakra control and became a medic. I was with your mom my entire life. So I thought this would be something both of us can learn together. Shizen informs the blonde before giving him a slip of paper. Shizen grabbed her own and turned to Naruto. On three, one, two, three. They poured chakra into the paper and the results shocked both of them. Shizen's paper split and turned purple with fumes coming out of it. Naruto split four ways, with each piece crumbling, getting wrinkled, wet and burning. Wow, we're awesome. Naruto cheered. Shizen was still stunned. She had a keki-eyed genkai, but how? Sanade was approaching the Sinja training ground. She just got a random message from Shizen that there was something important to show her and it involved both her and Naruto. When she arrived, she saw Naruto continually try to run up a waterfall but kept falling halfway down. She suppressed a giggle but blushed a bit when she saw Naruto's toned body. Have to give credit to the Gaki, he's definitely going to gain attention. She then saw Shizen ogling him and smirked. But it seems he'll soon be off limits. To bad Haruno messed up, especially when they see the blonde's progress after his time is up. Shizen, I'm here. Shizen turned her attention from the blonde into her sensei. Sonade sama you're here. Sonade smiled and decided to tease her apprentice. You know Shizen, you could call me mom. Especially since you ogled my son. Shizen blushed and was stuttering. Sure show, he might hear. Sonade giggled a bit but turned serious. Anyway, what was so important that you called me from the office? Naruto Kuen, come here. Naruto turned from the waterfall and headed towards the two ladies. Hey Ka-chan, I guess you're here to see what we discovered. Naruto asked. Sonade was confused and turned to the raven-haired medic. What did you discover? Well, we just have to show you. Naruto, you go first since, yours would be easier to adjust to. Shizen instructed handing Naruto a slip of chakra paper. Sanade saw this, she could assume Naruto had two elements. She doubted she would be called just for him to have one element. When she saw the results, her jaw dropped. How is this possible? Sochi have every affinity? This is great and amazing, Sanade said. We're not done, watch me this time. Sanade turned to her apprentice. She realized she never knew the Shizen affinity and was curious. Could it be the same as Naruto's? If it was, she would have the potential to be like her grandfather. Shizen poured chakra and the paper turned purple and started to fume. What is this? Sanade asked. Well, Naruto Kuen took a sniff of the fume and it turns out it's poison. I have a keki eye Jenkai. Shizen explained. Well, that makes sense. Whenever you use any poison attacks, you never suffer from chakra loss of a great amount, and now that I think about it, you have never been poisoned in any way, not even food or alcohol. It happens at least once to everyone. You are immune and can produce poison from your body. Also, if I remember right, poison releases from the Yukumi clan and Kiri, but they have been wiped out. 
Poison consists of water, earth, and wind. It looks like you and Narachan are going to be working together on your earth, wind, and water. Shizen nodded in understanding. Sonade, while I know some ninjutsu, I never did affinity manipulation training before. Sonade sighed. Well, I wouldn't mind teaching you, but I still have paperwork to do. If I could get down faster, I would gladly work with you too. Naruto tilted his head sideways in confusion. Ka-chan, why not use Kagabunshin? You gain their memories and you could stay here. Sonade and Shizen were quiet while staring at the blonde. Sonade engulfed Naruto in a huge hug and kissed his cheek. Thank you for figuring out the secret, and you just completed a S-rank mission. Now I definitely could help you train now. Kachan, what about my wind and lightning? Naruto, you practicing three affinity is enough for now. You're now about to begin Jonin level training. After you master two, you'll practice the other two. I promise. So there you are. The three turned to a blue-haired woman floating in the sky. She had the body that matches Sonade, wearing a sky-blue kimono and a lizard tail. Who are you? Sonade asked, getting in a defensive position. How did you get in here? The mysterious woman bowed. I'm sorry for the intrusion. My name is Tiamat. I'm the Dragon Sage and the leader of the Dragon Clan. Sonade, Shizen, and Naruto's eyes widened. And I'm here for the blonde. You see, I choose him for my next summoner. I sensed his presence and he awakened his affinity, but also what drew me in was his righteous heart. Excuse time at Sama, but I never heard of the Dragon Clan. Shizen said, Of course, we choose our summoners by their heart and soul. They also required to have more than two affinities. Speaking of, she approached Shizen and studied her. You're also allowed. You awaken a poison bloodline. Kayla will love to meet you. She's a poison dragon. That's so cool. Naruto exclaimed. Tiamat nodded. I never learned of your name, handsome. Naruto blushed but then bowed. My name is Naruto Senju. Tiamat turned to Sonade. I see, you adopted him. You two don't smell alike. You were Sonade Senju, right? You were also accepted, but you have a contract with a sage creature, the slugs if I'm correct. But wait, I have the toad contract, even though I couldn't summon a toad for some reason. Hmm, it worked before. Narachan, I'm afraid that pervert took you off the contract for some reason. Sonade signed and hugged her son. I've been trying to get into contact with him, but he's off the radar. But this is a good opportunity. Naruto was about to cry but held his tears. He was going to miss Gamakichi and the chief, but he couldn't do anything about it. You're right. I don't need him. I have you and Shizanchan. Sonade nodded. That's correct. Now do you mind if I ask, what benefits signing a dragon contract will do besides your destructive power? Taimat chuckled. Gladly, you see we have our own taijutsu style. Kinjutsu style and ninjutsu technique like the dragon flame jutsu the pitiful Uchiha clan stole from us. When you learn it, it'll be on a greater scale. Also when you train with us, we'll develop your body to be resistant to all your personal affinities and you'll be able to absorb them to add to your chakra. That's amazing. Shizen commented. That means she would be resistant to water, wind, and earth attacks. But Naruto might be straight up ninjutsu proof. We're also as strong as Bijus, so we can't have just anyone sign. That's why we have a test. She held her hands up, and a blue flame appeared. I'll launch some fire at you. If you survive, you are worthy. If not, you die. It's up to you too. I'm in, Naruto said, stepping forward. I'm not backing down. Shizen looked nervous, but after seeing her student step forward, she did as well. Same, we're in this together. Sanade wanted to stop them, but Naruto did the impossible before. Even though she was afraid, she would believe in him. Tiamat smirked before launching the stream of flame toward the two, engulfing them. The blue flame turned to a rainbow color, and when it cleared, Shizen and Naruto were fine. You're worthy. Tiamat pulled out a scroll and presented it to the two. Sign your names with your blood. Ladies first, Naruto said, causing Shizen to giggle. She stepped forward and signed. Naruto soon followed suit and signed his own name. Tiamat gathers the scroll and presents the two chunks of metal. Now this is chakra metal infused with dragon scales. When you pour chakra into this, it will transform into a weapon that suits you. As you grow, it will as well. Only you'll be able to use it and only people who signed our contract can even touch it. Shizen went ahead and poured chakra into the metal and it turned into two crimson large daggers with an onyx edge. Naruto went after and is turned into a two-handed black katana with a gold edge and a dragon design going down the body. Timat pulled out two more sets of scrolls and handed it to the new dragon summoners. These contain our taijutsu style and many kinjutsu styles suited for any weapon. 
You are required to learn them before we teach you anything else. Naruto accepted the scroll and smiled towards the humanoid dragon. Thank you, Time Atsama. You won't be disappointed. Shizen bowed in thanks as well. We really appreciate the opportunity. Tiamat smiled. No need to thank me. Just don't miss. Use our power and we're good. I believe in you too. Now I might have to inform the rest of my clan. I will reach you if I believe you are ready for more training in Shizen Sama. I'll let Kayla know about your Keki Ijenkai. Toodles. Tiamat said before poofing away. Sonate laughed. Sochi, why do the most amazing things always happen when I'm around you? Naruto scratched his head in embarrassment. Well, it's because I'm awesome. The woman chuckled. Why I agree. It's time to step up our training even more. We don't want to disappoint Tiamat Sama. It was the final week of Naruto's probation. He and Shizen both mastered the Taijutsu style but still need weapon training. Shizen was proud of Naruto's progress. His skill in Taijutsu was high jonin. His chakra control was high chunin. Ninjutsu was high chunin. No jinjutsu and thanks to his Kage Bunshin. His Fuinjutsu was on the level of Jiraiya according to Sanade, but he still had his own clan seals to learn. Overall he was a low jonin, but when he gained more experience, he should be higher. Naruto had got a new outfit as well. To match his sword, he wore black cargo pants, with a gold short sleeve tight shirt, black line going down. His sword was strapped to his right side and had arm guards on his arms with sleeveless gloves. All right, I'm ready, Naruto said, coming out of the room. Wow, you look handsome, Shizen said, causing him to blush. She definitely likes teasing him. It made her feel good about herself. Thanks, Shizen-chan. Let's go to Bachan. Sanade was staring down three of the Jonin sensei after she called them to the office. She wanted to promote her son to Chunin, and she came up with a way to do it and make it fair. Greetings, Kakashi, Karinai, and Asuma. I wanted to talk to you about the Chunin exams. Since the invasion happened, no one was promoted from our village, and Suno promoted Gara and his family. I decided to promote Shikamaru, but to make it seem like we didn't lose our edge, I'm going to have each of us pick one student from our team to promote. Then I'm going to pick one student outside the TU pick. Since Shikamaru was picked, Asuma, you won't have a say. Asuma nodded. Honestly, he didn't think any of them were ready but Shikamaru. Karina I stepped forward. I think Shino is ready. He's calm and collective, and he didn't get to show off in the finals because Kankuro quit. Kakashi stepped forward. I believe Sasuke can handle it. He was rookie of the year and a prodigy. He's definitely strong enough. Sanade rubbed her temples. She knew Kakashi was going to nominate the Uchiha. While I disagree with the Uchiha, Shino, I need to see an action. As for my nominee, I choose Naruto. He defeated Gara and Bija form and Niji on the same day using his clones. I feel if we don't prompt him, the other villages will investigate it. If I may, I don't believe Naruto is ready. He might have the strength, but he's still immature. Maybe next tune an exam, Kakashi said. Sanade smirked. I figure you say that so I decided to do this. Every Jinin from your team versus Naruto, if he wins, he becomes a Chunin. If he loses, Shino and Sasuke get promoted. We will have the council watch as well and have them judge. How's that? Plus I can witness Naruto kick Kiba's and Sasuke's ass for talking about him. Karina, Asuma and Kakashi were gasping at this. Did she really believe Naruto to be that strong? Their train of thought was cut off when Naruto walked in the room with Shizen. Kakashi and Sakura jaw dropped. While Karina was blushing, she had to admit that Naruto looked good without his headband and had muscle that was trying to squeeze out his shirt. Naruto ignored the jonin and bowed to Sonade. Hokage-sama, I completed my training. Sonade nodded and pulled out a headband with a black cloth. Naruto grabbed it and put it around his neck. Naruto, we were actually talking about you. We decided that you will fight the other rookies beside Shikamaru, and if you win, you will be promoted. If they win, Sasuke and Shino will be promoted. Are you interested? I think you should do it. Everyone turned to Shizen. Show everyone who wrong you see how great you are. I believe in you. Naruto smiled and turned to Tsunade. I'll do it. Hokage-sama. Tsunade smiled and nodded. Shizen did well with Naruto for the last two months and she was excited to see she progress. Plus when Naruto wins, it could convince the other genin to try harder. Naruto, are you sure? You just came back from retaking your lesson. Most likely you will lose, especially against Sasuke, Kakashi said. Naruto narrowed his eyes on his sensei. Of course if I lose, whose fault would that be Hitaki-san? Kakashi's eyes wide. Naruto, you're supposed to call me Kakashi-sensei. You don't deserve it. Naruto said in an angry tone, surprising the other jonin except Shizen. 
She was aware of how disappointed Naruto was in his supposed sensei. You only taught me one thing, and that was because we're on an A-rank mission. But you taught Sasuke in A-rank assassination jutsu. I only did that because Sasuke was fighting Gara. Kakashi said. Interesting, then let me ask you something. Don't you know the Kage Bunshin? Naruto asked. Shizen and Sanade smirked. They knew where he was going with this. Of course, you saw me perform it. Kakashi answered. So why didn't you use a clone to train me? Also, if you know the jutsu, then you should be aware of its memory transfer. You know how much I could have learned? But you didn't tell me. Tell me, what's your excuse? I didn't think you were ready for any jutsu? Kakashi tries to defend. Really? Then watch me prove you wrong. Naruto said before walking towards the door. Sanade smirked at this. She couldn't wait to see Naruto in action even though she knew he would probably hold back. Shizen was turned on. She loved how Naruto was aggressive. She couldn't help seeing his manly side. She loved his nice side, but this was good too. Naruto stopped by the door and turned to the jonin. And to make sure there are no excuses, you can decide between one-on-one -on -one or one versus all. The jonin eyes widened at this. Sanade was happy that her son developed a backbone. She was so excited for the match. So, since he's your student Kakashi, what will it be? Kakashi thought hard about it. He knew about the blonde stamina so one versus one wouldn't work. So the only other option was, one versus all, this will teach not to be arrogant. Sanade narrowed her eyes at the copy Nin for assaulting her son, calling her son arrogant, and pretty much told her that he never paid attention to Naruto. Fine, I'll set up the Chunin Stadium tomorrow and around noon, we will have our match. Dismiss. The Jonin bowed and left. Sanade turned to Shizen and smirked. So, how much do you think Narachan will hold back? Shizen smiled alongside her master. I know he won't use his sword. If he can figure out each of their weaknesses, it won't be much effort. Sanade nodded in agreement. Naruto was a versatile shinobi, and since none of the jinin knew any jinjutsu, not that it'll work, Naruto will win. She hated to admit that the only challenge would be the Uchiha, but he was not at Naruto's level. What made her even more proud of her son was the fact that he wanted to learn medical ninjutsu. Without the fox, his chakra control was significantly better and it increased. She believed Naruto could really surpass every Kage before him. I can't wait till he whoops every ass. Shizen chuckled at the statement. You know, I'm so confident that I'll allow you to bet on him. Sanade smiles brightly at this. Really? Thanks, I knew you would believe in me someday. Actually, I think Naruto Kuen is more lucky than you are unlucky. Shizen commented, causing Sanade to slam her head on the desk. It was the next day, and Naruto was in the Chunin Stadium, calm as ever. He was informed that he would be fighting all the rookie eight at once. He was honestly not that excited. Because of Shizen teaching, he was wiser. Ino, Sakura, and he hate to say it, Hinata had the same weakness. Kiba, he already beat once. Shino was pretty simple. Shikamaru would be a small challenge and Choji wouldn't take much effort. Sasuke would be fun but not much of a challenge. Soon people from the village were entering taking their seats for the supposed competition. Naruto could hear mumbling about the demon losing. Naruto didn't care. All he needed was his mom and Shizen. Speaking of, he noticed the two enter the top of the stadium looking down at him. Naruto gave them a warm smile which was returned. Soon the jin and he was facing entered the stadium. Sanade decided to start the announcement. Welcome everyone. This will be a match between one jin and vs8. Naruto Senja versus the rookie nine excluding him. The match will end when either Naruto wins or he loses. Now the match will start when Ginma, our proctor, starts it. Ginma, you have the field. Ginma nodded. Thanks, Hokage-sama. Now before we start the match, I will let you know the rules. There will be no killing allow. When I say the match is over, it's over. Do everyone agree? The Jinin nodded. Then you may begin, Ginma said, jumping back. Sasuke smirked. Give up, Dobe. Without the QB, you are nothing. You can't beat me. So what makes you think you can beat all of us? Naruto looked at the emo and gave him a small smile without answering. Sasuke was annoyed that the dead last was ignoring him. Sakura noticed this and turned to the blonde. Naruto, Sasuke was being nice by warning you. You can't beat all of us. Naruto still didn't say anything, which annoyed his two teammates. Tsunade was impressed. Naruto was using their ego against them, now to see how he would beat them. Naruto turned to Hinata and bowed to her. I'm sorry Hinata-chan, I am really am. Hinata was confused until Naruto disappeared and appeared in front of her. Huh. Naruto gave her a hug and kissed her on the forehead, causing her to blush and pass out. There, now Hinata's out, 
Ginma-san, call her out, if you please. Ginma signed. Hinata Hyuga out. Karina I was shocked. Naruto used Hinata's feelings against her. She didn't know if she should be impressed or angry. But since Naruto apologized, she guessed she'd let it slide, but she would still talk to Naruto. Shizen smirked, she wasn't jealous about the kiss, since Naruto was exploiting her weakness. Naruto turned to Ino and Sakura with a seductive smirk. I guess it's your turn. Sakura snorted. Fact chance, we won't fall for that. Yeah, you must be a dumbass to think we would stoop that low. Ino added. Hmm, let's test it out. Naruto said before disappearing. He appeared behind them and smirked, going to a single hand sign. Oiro Grakahari Muno Jutsu. Ino and Sakura turned to see different versions of a half-naked Sasuke posing for the Inoheim, I always thought you were beautiful. One of Sasuke said, Sakura-chan, you really have a cute forehead. Another Sasuke said before hugging the girl in half-nude. Ino and Sakura pass out in a nosebleed. Ginma signed in embarrassment. Sakura Haruno and Ino Yamanaka are out. Kakashi and Asuma place their hands on their forehead in embarrassment. Sonate glared at the two jonin. You didn't get rid of their fangirl tendency? I want you two to work on the... I don't want any kunoichi, being fangirls. We are supposed to be the strongest village in the whole nation. You better fix this. Hi Hokage sama both male jonin said in unison. Naruto looked at Shino and smirked. Shino, since we're friends, I'm going to warn you to surrender. I'll show why so you'll get the hint. Naruto channeled right and chakra around his body like a bug zapper. Shino was quiet before turning to Ginma. I surrender. Ginma nodded in disappointment. So far, Naruto took out four jin and without even trying. At this rate, Naruto was going to beat them all. Kakashi was surprised that Naruto had lightning affinity like him. Kiba snarled. I'll beat the dope. He owes me a rematch for cheating. Naruto quirk an eyebrow. What are you talking about? I never cheated. Please. Everyone knows you used the Kyubi chakra against me. There's no way a dead lass could beat me without it. Kiba responded. Really? Watch this then. Naruto ran to Kiba at Chunin level speed before appearing in front of him. Kiba prepared to block his attack, but unfortunately for him, Naruto had other plans. Naruto put his hands in a ram sign. Oirok no Jutsu. Naruto called out before transforming into a naked girl. He then wrapped his arms around Kiba, who was stunned. Kiba-sama, can you show me how an alpha dominate his mate? Please. Naruko asked before blowing into his ear. Kiba nose started to bleed. Naruto transformed back to his male form and kicked Kiba's chin, sending him into the air. Then he made seal less clones and they all leaped up in the air, around Kiba with their leg extended. Uzumaki Naruto ran Dan. All the Naruto's called out, using the same move he beat him the first time, sending Kiba to the ground. The real Naruto sent out some key to Akamaru, causing him to pass out. Kiba was knocked unconscious once he hit the ground. Kiba and Azuka out. Genma said. He really wasn't impressed. Karina I signed in disappointment. It looks like I have to work with my team. Sorry about that Karina I chan Asuma said. Naruto was just standing in the same spot he started at. Shikamaru was trying to come up with a plan. After seeing Naruto in action, he realized Naruto knew everyone's weaknesses. But what was his? Besides being lazy, what could Naruto have planned against him? Choji, can you distract Naruto, and I'll trap him. Choji nodded and was about to activate his clan expansion jutsu. Shikamaru, just go ahead and capture me, Naruto said. Shikamaru's eyes widened. Why would he say that? If Shikamaru captures Naruto, the fight is pretty much over. Unless Naruto knew a way to counteract it. Fine, cage main no jutsu. Shikamaru's shadow stretches and connects to Naruto's. Now watch. Naruto says before walking forward. Your clan technique is strong, but if your opponent has more chakra. He kept walking while Shikamaru was struggling. Naruto stopped in front of Shikamaru. Shikamaru signed. This is troublesome, I forfeit. Naruto smirked and nodded. Nikuden Sensha. Naruto turned to Choji, rolling towards him. Naruto quickly put his hand on the ground, planting a seal then leaping back. When Choji rolled over the seal, he was paralyzed. Naruto then charged the oversized Jinin and punched him in the stomach with enhanced chakra, sending Choji flying back into the wall of the stadium. Naruto looked at him with an emotionless face and signed. This is it. Sonate stared at Naruto from her seat in the stadium when she saw him sign. Sonate gritted her teeth with the tea sesuke, causing the jonin to look at her. Is something wrong, Hokage-sama? Karina asked. Yeah, but not with me. It seems Naruto's bored. I can understand with all the effort he put into his training. 
Sonade answered. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Training? Wasn't he supposed to correct himself? It's kinda unfair for the rest of the Jinin. Sonade narrowed her eyes and stared at the one-eyed Jonin, causing him to flinch. Who fault is that? You three could have trained your students within the two months and don't speak about unfair when it comes to Naruto. He's been sabotaged and ignore his whole life with no one to help him. That's not true. Kakashi responded. Really? No one helped in the academy and everyone looked down on him, causing his class to follow. You didn't help him either. Teamwork exercises, please. You taught the Yukika two B-rank Jutsu and an A-rank. What did you teach Naruto or Sakura? Sanade said. But still the train is. In my rights, not that I trained him. Remember, he's a Sinja now, my son, and I didn't lie. I corrected him, but I never said it was just from the academy. I had his new teacher correct him how you were supposed to. You thought Sasuke Uchiha was the strongest on your team. In terms of skill he was, but that was because he had a family. Naruto has raw talent and power. He is a born battle expert. Have you noticed how he was able to think on the spot in battle and outthink his opponents with no taijutsu? Kurinai, Kakashi, and Asuma realized as Naruto tricked Kiba with his clones. Transformed into a weapon to save Kakashi and outmaneuvered Niji in the finals. And now, let's see how he does against the Uchiha. Everyone turned to the arena where Sasuke and Naruto were the only ones standing. Sasuke looked at Naruto with an arrogant smirk. You should give up. You might have beaten the others, but I'm not like them. Naruto smirked. Well, you're definitely not smart like them. You could have jumped in to help them. After all, teamwork was all Kakashi-san taught us. Well, me and Sakura, but I guess he didn't do a good job. Kakashi flinched and frowned at his student's comment as Sonade smirked. Sasuke seethed. That doesn't matter. I don't need their help. No one can beat a Uchiha besides an Uchiha. Sasuke smirked. Naruto tilted his head. Except the Shodai, Naidame, Sandame, Yandame, and even Kaachan. I'm pretty sure Kakashi-san beat some before, and I was there when Gara and Petamara kicked your ass, Sue. So. Naruto said. Sasuke glared hatred at the blonde before charging him in a fit of rage. He threw a punch, but Naruto caught it effortlessly with a bored expression. No Sharingan team? I'm insulted but doesn't matter, you'll lose regardless. In a quick blur, Naruto's fist landed in Sasuke's stomach, causing the Uchiha to cough. While still holding his hand, Naruto lifted Sasuke off the ground and slammed back down. He lifted him up again and kicked him in the stomach and sent him tumbling back. All the Jinin that was knocked out turned to the fight and was surprised to see Sasuke rolling on the ground and Naruto leg extended. Kiba charged the blonde. Kiba and Azuka, you've been knocked out. Kiba stopped and turned to Sanade, who glared at him. But that isn't fair. Kiba retorted. He tricked me with that perverted jutsu. And whose fault is that? He used your weakness. It's not his fault you're a pervert. He did whatever a regular Chunin would do. Winning fights is not determined with just brute strength. Everyone has weaknesses. Yours, Ino's, and Sakura's were simple to use because you three think with your hormones. Shino gave up because if his bugs touched the lightning, zap. Hinata's affection was hers and Shikamaru didn't have enough chakra to hold Naruto. Choji attacks were too straightforward. Use this loss as a lesson to become better. Kiba shut up and turned to the fight. Sakura smiled in confidence. Well, Naruto can't beat Sasuke Kuen, he has no weaknesses. Wrong. Everyone turned to Naruto, who was still looking at Sasuke as he got up. First weakness, Sasuke is arrogant. Naruto charged the Uchiha and made two CLS clones. The first Naruto threw a punch, which was blocked. The second got behind Sasuke and sweep kicked the Uchiha. Sasuke lost balance, but was soon sent into the air BYT the first Naruto uppercutting him. The third Naruto was already in the air, holding his hands together and slamming into Sasuke's head, sending him back to the ground. He is so arrogant, he still hasn't activated his dojutsu because of his pride. And speaking of, second weakness. You'll pay for that dope. Sasuke snarled, activating his two Tomo Sharingan. Naruto got into a defensive earth dragon stance. While the Sharingan can copy movements, if Sasuke's body can't adapt, it's useless. Sasuke charged Naruto with another punch. Naruto grabbed his wrist and pulled him forward, causing Sasuke to stumble. Naruto then sent an attack with his arm and it hit Sasuke's face, followed by a knee to the stomach, then a punch to his left cheek and ending it with a palm to his chest. Everyone was surprised that Naruto was easily handling the rookie of the year. Sasuke stumbled back a bit and wiped the blood from his mouth, but he wasn't given time to relax when Naruto disappeared and reappeared behind. 
Sasuke's eyes widened and turned to Naruto and threw a kick at him. Naruto ducked and gave Sasuke a palm uppercut. Sasuke stepped back a bit and went for a punch towards Naruto's face, but Naruto tilted his head and sent another punch to his stomach. Sasuke keeled over and gave Naruto an opportunity to roundhouse kick him, sending the Uchiha flying. How did Naruto get so strong? He was a dead last. Ino asked. He was always this strong. Everyone turned to Sonate. If he had a teacher to give him the time of day since the beginning, he would have been even stronger, but no matter how many times he needed help, he was ignored because all his senseis beside Aruka were failures. Sonate said, with the last part looking at Kakashi, who looked down in shame. Sasuke got back up and went through hand signs. Naruto smiled and went through the same hand signs, surprising everyone. Katan. Ryuka no Jutsu. Sasuke shot out a stream of flame, but Naruto's flame took the shape of a huge dragon. Naruto's jutsu pushed back Sasuke, and Sasuke was forced to dodge. I don't understand. Sasuke and Naruto used the same jutsu, so why was Naruto stronger? Sakura asked out loud. Why do you ask? Because Naruto has way more chakra, and just by adding more, he overpowered. Shino answered. How do you know that jutsu? Sasuke yelled. Naruto snorted. I went to the library. Sasuke struggled to stand up and glared at the blonde and he grinned. I know a jutsu you don't. After performing the hand signs, Sasuke's left hand was covered in lightning. Naruto glared at the Uchiha. How far will you go for your pride? There are some jutsus you should never use in a spar, and that is one of them. Chidori is a sanination jutsu. Are you really going to kill me? I will not lose to you dope. Now witness my power. Sasuke said, charging the blonde. Naruto threw a kanai to the side and stood there as Sasuke charged him. Naruto, you idiot, dodge. Sakura yelled, worried for the blonde. Tsunade narrowed her eyes and turned to Kakashi. You're lucky Naruto has a way to counter the jutsu or you would die for the Uchiha attempt on my son's life. I know, I'll set him straight after this. Kakashi responded. Sasuke charged the blonde at a fast pace, arm forward, prepared to pierce the blonde. Everyone was wondering what the blonde was going to do, but when Sasuke shoved the Chidori through Naruto's chest, everyone gasped and turned to Sanade, but to their surprise, she was calm. They turned back to the field and saw Naruto smirking. Then he uttered one word. Boom. Naruto exploded, sending the Uchiha backwards with his arm burnt from the explosion. Sasuke was unconscious and groaning in pain. Hinata looked around for her crush, but couldn't find him. Where's Naruto Kuen? she asked. Then the kunai Naruto threw poof into smoke and Naruto was standing there. He transformed into a kunai and substituted himself with an explosion clone. Sanade answered. Naruto studied everyone's weaknesses and knew if he drove Sasuke far enough, he would result in using the jutsu. He had multiple ways to deal with and this was one of the less impressive ways. And since Sasuke is out, Naruto wins the battle royal without taking a scratch or using 25% of his skill. There's no way the loser is that strong. Kiba said, Are you calling me a liar? Sanade asked, while glaring at the Inazuka. Kiba ducked a bit in embarrassment. I think Kiba meant you were exaggerating, Hokage-sama. Karina intervened. Sanade snorted. No, I'm not. Naruto didn't put in any effort and I saw his training. Naruto was holding back a lot and only used what was necessary to win and not show off. He concealed his skills and dealt with everyone accordingly. Just like a chunin and speaking of which, a deal is a deal. Naruto Senju is hereby a Chunin and will return to Team 7. Congrats Naruto. Someone grab the Uchiha and take him to the infirmary. Kakashi volunteered and shunts into the boy. He turned to Naruto and smiled. Congratulations. Sanade approached Naruto who stood straight and tall when she came close. Naruto Senju, you're now a Chunin. As Hokage, I expect you to serve your village. Sanade said in a serious tone before adopting a softer look. But as a mother... I'm proud of you, but please keep getting stronger. I want you to return from every mission if possible. Naruto bowed towards her. Thank you, Hokage-sama. After lifting his head, he gave her a hug. Thanks for believing in me, Ka-chan. Sanade smiled and kissed his forehead. No problem. How about later we go to Ichiraku's to celebrate? It's been a while since you've been there. Naruto smiled and nodded. Naruto then turned to Hinata and frowned. He approached the Hyuga who started to blush. Hinata, listen. I'm sorry I used your feelings for me to beat you. I didn't want to hurt since you've treated me better than most people. Forgive me. Naruto bowed. Hinata gasped and blushed. You mean? Naruto stood up and looked at her. Yeah, I know you like me. Hinata's face was red and started fidgeting. Well, so, what do you think? 
I think you're a pretty nice person, but I hardly know you, and I feel like if I go out with you, it will be out of false affection. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, but I don't want to be in a relationship unless I have some affection towards you. Hinata wanted to cry but smiled. At least Naruto cared for her. She wasn't going to give up on him but understood. I understand and thank you for being honest. We can still be friends if you want. Naruto gave her a foxy grin. I like that. Very mature of you, Naruto Kuen. Naruto turned to see Karinai and Asuma approached. Thank you for sparring Hinata's feelings. Also, I'm sorry for always doubting you. You improved and from what Hokage-sama said, you were still holding back. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. Yeah, I didn't get to use much of what I learned. If you don't mind me asking, what exactly did you learn? Asuma asked. Naruto turned to Sanade, who nodded and pulled out a scroll, opening before handing it to Asuma. Asuma and Karina looked at and read the content. Naruto Senju, from the Uzumaki and Senju clan. Ninjutsu, Lo Jonin. Taijutsu, Haichunin. Kinjutsu, Midchunin. Jinjutsu, non-existing. Iriyajutsu, Midchunin. Overall skill puts him a low jonin. High chakra reserves, extraordinary healing abilities, chakra chains and have all five nature affinities. Excellent chakra and battle tactics. Asuma dropped his cigarette, while Karinai gasped and both thought the same thing damn. Naruto. Naruto turned to the genin. Sakura stepped forward and narrowed her eyes. We need to talk. Why haven't you told me or Sasuke Kurin about the QB? Naruto stared at his teammate and friends as they waited for an answer. Normally Naruto would beg the girl for forgiveness and try to amend. But as he trained with Shizen-chan and his mom, he realized he gave people way too much power over him, especially Sakura. Naruto had no reason to feel guilty or lie anymore about the QB since he's gone. Why should I have to? Naruto responded. Sakura's eyes widened and narrowed. Why? Because we're your teammates. Didn't you think we have the right to know? I did, and I came up with an answer. You don't. People have their own secrets and mine was a burden. Plus we're only teammates. I don't have to tell you everything. Not that you would care. Naruto responded, throwing Sakura off. Normally her teammate would have groveled and apologized to her. Well you're wrong. Teammates are supposed to trust each other and treat each other like family. Sakura scolded. And how did that go so far? We have been doing a terrible job so far. Naruto said. What do you mean? Sakura asked confusingly. Well, since you don't know, allow me to explain and let's start with the emo. Sasuke Uchiha, goals to avenge his clan, don't care about anyone but himself. Kakashi Sensei, and I use that word loosely, never believed in me or trained me. Then there's you. The only time we hung out together was when Sasuke was there, but you could never spare time for me. You didn't say thank you when I brought Ka-chan back with me to heal the team or when I saved you for Gara. So, the word team is nothing but an empty word when it comes to our team, Naruto stated. Sakura looked down in shame. Naruto didn't trust them. She didn't even think he considered her a friend. I'm a sorry, Naruto. I never knew you felt this way. Well, now you do. So, don't ask me about my personal business, Naruto said. The rest of the rookies were shocked at how Naruto talked to his crush, yet they couldn't deny his words. Head dead last. Naruto turned to Kiba. I want a rematch. Kiba demanded. Naruto narrowed his eyes and turned away. Now thanks, I'm good. Idiot, are you scared? Kiba taunted with a smirk. Naruto would always get riled up when he was insulted. Naruto cocked an eyebrow in confusion. I just beat the whole rookie nine without trying. You by yourself is not enough to scare me and even if you are still in denial, you also lost to me in the Chunin exam when my chakra was handicapped by Padoimaru. Stop lying, you couldn't beat me without it. Kiba said. Actually, Kiba, you're wrong. Inazuka turned to Sakura. Naruto chakra was messed up after Orochimaru sealed him from the QB, I remember. He used the QB chakra when he fought the Sanni. It felt so evil and vile. I'm pretty sure everyone in the room would have remembered that feeling if he used it again. She's right, Kiba. The power of the QB is dangerous. If Naruto Kuen used it, you'd probably have died. I remember the feeling of the fox, and I can honestly say he didn't use it. Karina added. You were defeated by Naruto fairly. Kiba had nothing to say. His sensei even confirmed it. Fine, but part of me still doesn't believe that this weakling didn't have some sort of help. Naruto just shook his head and gave up. Whatever, I'm going to get some ramen now. Ka-chan, can we go now? Sonade nodded and looked at the Jonins. All of you go get checked up and take a break. In a few days, you can take up missions. Naruto, wait. Naruto turned to Sakura. We should go check up on Sasuke. 
Sakura said in a worried voice. I'm surprised you would suggest that, Shizen said. Sakura turned to the older medic. Why wouldn't I? He's our teammate, Sakura said. Even though you and Sasuke said you wish you had another teammate? Shizen said. Sakura went pale. Naruto turned to Sakura with a hurt expression. What does she mean, Sakura? Naruto asked. I, um, you see, while you were training, I went shopping. Sakura and Sasuke both said they wish they had another teammate because you always hold them back. Sakura said you never should have become a shinobi and idiot. Kiba called you a cheater and Sasuke a worthless deadweight. Shizen answered Naruto. Naruto just stood there and didn't say anything. Sakura was getting worried. Naruto. Sakura called, reaching out to her teammate. Don't. Naruto said, turning his back on the pinkette. I'm sorry I'm a disappointment. Naruto said, walking to Ichirakas. Shizen glared at Sakura and followed Naruto alongside. Tsunade stared at Sakura with a dagger look. Sakura, I should kill you for hurting my son. Tsunade stated, Sakura shivered a bit. But Naruto will be mad at me for it. But you need to stop being a fangirl and grow up. You probably didn't mean what you said, but you always make decisions based on the Uchiha. Fix yourself and become a true Kunoichi. Tsunade walked away, leaving a crying Sakura. Most of the rookies went to comfort her as they proceeded to the hospital to check on Sasuke. Unknown to everyone, Tiamat and Kayla were watching, both glaring at the rookies before disappearing. Itadakamasu, Naruto, Shizen and Sanade said as they began to eat some ramen. So naruto Kuen, how are you feeling about what happened? Naruto stopped eating. I'm fine. After all, I'm used to the treatment. Like I said before, I have you and Ka-chan with me, Shizen-chan. Naruto said, causing Shizen to blush. What about us? The group turned their heads and saw Tiamat eating ramen with a burgundy hair color woman who looked like Tiamat. Hey everyone, this is Kayla. Nice to meet you, especially you Shizen-san. Tiamat informed me on your bloodline, and I have to say I'm impressed that a human has potential to become my personal summoner. Kayla said before turning her head towards Naruto. This cutie must be Naruto. Nice to meet your acquaintance. We saw your fight and gotta say we were impressed. We brought some sake from the Dragon Mountain. Tiamat said, grabbing a big bottle. Really? Is it good? Sanade asked, reaching for the bottle only for Tiamat to pull it away. This is for our summoner. You only get some after they get some. It's stronger than your human sake, so be careful, Tiamat said. But Sochi is only 14. Pity, I guess you have to wait until. Old enough to kill, old enough to drink. Sanade said quickly. Kayla chuckled and pulled out a scroll, handing it Shizen. These are some poison jutsu for you. Anyway, we have to go now and set some things up for our new summoners. If you two want any sake, let me know. Both Kayla said before disappearing with Tiamat. Well, that happened. Naruto said. Shizen nodded in agreement. The group resumed enjoying their ramen. Shizen paused and turned to Tsunade. Tsunade-sama, there's something I would like to ask you and Naruto Kuen too. Both blondes gave the raven-haired medic their attention. I enjoyed the past two months training Naruto Kuen. So I was wondering, would it be alright if I continued being Naruto Kuen's apprentice? Naruto beamed at the request and turned to his mother. Can she chan I would love that as well. Well, she did train you more than the pervert and Kakashi. Of course, I'll allow it as long as you give me grandkids soon. Sanade said with a teasing smirk. Shizen's face turned as red as a tomato and she began to sputter. Sanade sama we're not ready for that. Naruto nodded his head with the same colored face as Shizen. Oh, so you didn't deny wanting it to happen. Sanade said, causing Shizen's face to steam up and pass out. Ugh, where am I? Sasuke said, waking up in a hospital room. You're finally awake? Sasuke turned to Sakura, saw her with a plate of apples. I cut these apples up for you. Sasuke said nothing and just glared at his bed sheets. How could I lose to the dobe? Is it possible he was so strong, even without the QB? No, it was his tutor. Whoever trained him must be strong, but who? I'll get dobe to tell me, like he has a choice not to. If he resists, I'll ask the council to force him. Sasuke thought. Whoever helped Naruto get strong could help him. Where's Naruto? Sakura flinched when the blonde name was mentioned. He's at the ramen stand. Did he tell you how he improved after our fight? No. Sakura answered with a quiet tone. I asked him why he didn't tell us about the QB. And Sasuke asked. He said we didn't have the right to know. Sakura answered. What did he mean by that? Aren't we a team? Sasuke asked out of character. He didn't care about the two but they did work together for half a year. 
He said we were the worst team and... Sakura began to explain everything he said. Sasuke just sat there listening to what Naruto said. He was also shocked when he found out Shizen listened to their conversation and told the blonde what they said. And that's everything. Sasuke, I know we didn't really get along with Naruto, but I do think we owe him an apology. I don't owe him anything. I meant what I said. Both of you are holding me back. Sakura was hurt by his words. Both of us. I understand Naruto. Sakura, you're more useless than Naruto. Even without the fox, he was always stronger than you. You always follow me around and try to agree with me with everything, thinking I'll like you for it. You're so annoying, Sasuke said. I see. Well, I'm sorry, Sakura said before leaving the hospital room. He's just upset that he lost to Naruto. I need to make things right, Sakura thought to herself. As she was about to leave, she ran into Ino and her team. Hey, forehead, what's with the upset face? Ino, why are you here? Well, obviously I'm here to check up on Sasuke Koen. Ino answered. She brought Choji and I because she didn't want to go alone. Troublesome blonde. Shikamaru said. Come on, Shikamaru. Don't you want to see how Sasuke Koen's doing? No. I'm not sure if you know or refuse to believe this, but I don't like the emo team. Shikamaru said. Why not? Sakura asked. You two should know that unlike most people, I see Naruto as a friend and seeing how Sasuke treats him alongside you two. Why should I like him? I was there at the restaurant when you two were talking about him, and even though I didn't show it, I was upset. Shikamaru answered with a hint of annoyance. Ino and Sakura were shocked to hear this, especially the anger in his voice. Sorry for asking. Ino said. Troublesome. I'm leaving. Shikamaru said, turning around and walking away with Choji. Ino was looking at her team walking away before turning to Sakura. So, how's Sasuke? He was upset. Sakura began. Later that night. Cheers, the three residents of the Sinju shouted as they proceeded. Naruto and Shizen decided to cook for Sanade. Sanade was grateful for the gesture but unsure about Naruto cooking, especially when Shizen walked out the kitchen telling her that Naruto said he would handle it. When Naruto and a couple clones came out with multiple trays with different types of food, her jaw almost hit the floor. Sochi, I didn't know you could cook. Naruto rubbed his head nervously. Well, when I was in Wave Country, Tsunami taught me how to cook and I kind of build on that. Hope you like it. Tsunade and Shizen looked at each other before digging in. To say it was just delicious would be an insult to Naruto. He did fabulous. Now Sochi, know that you're a Chunin. I guess I could tell you about your father and mother. You see, your mom's name was. Kushina Izumaki. Naruto said cutting her off. I know, when the fox gave me his chakra. I got the memories of most of his past. My dad was the fourth. I know everything. So you don't have to tell me. Kushina might have been my birth mom, but you are my real mom. Sanade jumped out her seat and ran over to Naruto, glomping him in a hug. My dear Narachan. Anyway, let's not waste the food Naruto Kuen cooked for us. Shizen suggested. Yeah, the sooner we eat, the sooner we can taste that delicious sake. Sanade cheered. But Naruto and I get the first cup since it was meant for us. Shizen said with a stern look. Fine. Sanade huffed. They started to enjoy the food Naruto made for them. Wow, Sochi, this is good. You have to cook more often. You make one lucky woman happy in the future, or should I say medic? Sanade teased while looking at Shizen, who was blushing up a storm. Naruto was also blushing at the thought of marrying Shizen, but shook it off. Now, let's have some of this dragon fire sake. Naruto said, earning another cheer from his mom. Naruto Kuen. Naruto and Sanade turned to Shizen, who were blushing up a storm. Has anyone ever told you how handsome you are? Shizen-chan, are you okay? Naruto asked the medic. Me? I'm fine, as long as I have you. Shizen said, wrapping her arms around Naruto's neck and kissing him on the cheek. You know, I never understood why those fangirls always love the dark and mystery dude. Especially when there are guys like you. Shizen, are you drunk? After two shots of sake? Sanade asked. Haha. No. I'm just happy. Shizen answered. She then turned to Naruto, who was blushing. Narakuen, do you think I'm beautiful? Naruto's blush disappeared and he gave her a warm smile. Of course I do. I think you're a fantastic person. You are very kind and smart, and even beautiful. Shizen blushed then gave Naruto a sultry smile. I love you too. She said before shoving her tongue in the blonde's mouth, causing both the moans. Sanade's jaw dropped before she approached the two and grabbed Shizen by the collar. Shizen, calm down. Shizen turned to Sanade with loopy eyes. Ah, you want some too? 
Shizen said before making out with Sanade. Naruto stared into space before passing out. Ugh, what happened? Naruto asked. When he tried to get up, he felt something weighing him down. He looked down and saw Shizen laying on his chest, only wearing underwear. Hmm. Naruto Kuin Shizen mumbled in her sleep. Naruto blushed up a storm. He quietly summoned a shadow clone and substituted it with himself before getting dressed and heading out the door. The dragon sake was strong, but it was good. I see why Ka-chan is addicted to the stuff, Naruto said, walking through the village. He was greeted by many villagers, but Naruto gave them a slight wave. Maybe I should get some ramen for breakfast or maybe some barbecue. Yo. Naruto snapped out of his thoughts and saw Kakashi standing behind with an eye smile. Naruto, I was hoping I would run into you. Kakashi-san, what do you want? Naruto asked. Now that he was a chunin, he was glad he didn't have to refer to the jonin as sensei, not that he deserved it. I wanted to do some team exercise to function better. Naruto cocked an eyebrow. If you remembered, Ka-chan said we had the day off. I know, but we could use this to train with your team. The team that doesn't want me. I was actually going to ask Ka-chan to quit Team 7. Naruto said, surprising Kakashi. That won't be necessary, Naruto. We need you. Kakashi said with an eye smile. But I don't need you. I have not benefited from this team since I joined, and I'm sure I'll be happy without it. I only learned tree climbing from you. You never believed in me. Sasuke keeps to himself and Sakura is his loyal pet. Please, Naruto, give us a chance. Kakashi begged. Naruto sighs in annoyance. Fine, one more chance. Naruto responded. Thank you. Kakashi said as he attempted to put his hand on Naruto's shoulder, but the blonde smacked it away. I know the Shunshin. Naruto said before disappearing in a smokeless blur to training ground 7. Kakashi was shocked, but got over it and followed suit. When Naruto arrived, he saw Sasuke leaning against a log post and Sakura sitting under a tree. Hey, Naruto. Sakura said nervously. Hey, was all that Naruto said. Sakura felt sad because she thought Naruto hated her. Naruto, listen, I didn't mean what I said about not wanting you on the team. I was. Just agreeing with Sasuke, like his personal pet. Listen, I understand you want him to like you, but come on. How long has this stick kept going? It never worked in the past, and what you and the team said hurt me. I never did anything mean to you, but you treat me like crap. Why? Sakura was speechless and looked down in shame. I'm sorry, Naruto. I really am. I don't know what's wrong with me. Is there anything I can do to make up for it? Sakura asked. Naruto narrowed his eyes and sighed. Change. Stop being a fangirl and stop acting pathetic. Make your own choices for you and not for the team. You get one chance at this. Naruto said with a dangerous glare. Sakura gulped and nodded. I'll try. Naruto nodded and walked away from the pinkette. Kakashi looked at the two and then Sasuke. Hope nothing breaks them apart. Dope. Naruto turned to Sasuke. I want to know who trained you. Well, I don't care what you want. Naruto responded. Sasuke seethed and grabbed Naruto's collar. I need to get stronger, and you are going to tell me who. Ugh. Sasuke grunted in pain as Naruto grabbed his wrist and began to twist it. You will not demand anything of me, Jinnan. I'm only here because Kakashi wanted us to work together, but obviously it's not going to work. Naruto said before a clone poofed in existence. Here, work with the clone. I'll get all his memories anyway. See you Kakashi, Sakura. Naruto said before disappearing in a shunshin. Naruto walked into his home and saw Shizen sitting across the table looking down in embarrassment, while Sanade was smirking at her. Shizen noticed Naruto walking in and blushed up a storm. M. Naruto Kuen. About last night. I understand you were drunk, Shizen chan. Naruto said. It was fun and no one got hurt. Thank you, but Tsunade sama took pictures. Shizen complained. Naruto blushed and turned to his mom, who was smirking. Ka chan? Really? What? It was cute how you two acted. I'm definitely saving this for later. Now that you two pretty much sucked faces, shouldn't you go on a date? Sanade teased. Both of them blushed at the thought. Shizen, you're the only one I would accept to be with my Sochi. And I know he'll make you happy. Sanade sama slash ka chan both yelled in embarrassment. A few months later, Shizen and Naruto continued their training with the Dragon Scrolls. Shizen also taught Naruto the chakra scalpel. Tsunade decided to help him perfect her chakra strength and started to work on the strength of a hundred seals and with her increased chakra and Naruto helping her with seals, Shizen decided to learn it as well. Shizen also became a full-fledged jonin to get some combat practice. Naruto was happy when was with the two medics, completely opposite to how he felt when he was with his own team. 
When they were in the village, Kakashi had them train together, but the consequence of that choice was Sasuke's anger and jealousy towards the blonde. Whenever they spar, Naruto won, and what angered the Uchiha the most was when he tried to copy his taijutsu style. Naruto would use the academy style to prevent it. Kakashi still wouldn't teach them anything because he was lazy and didn't want Sasuke to have more in his arsenal just in case he went rogue, so he decided not to teach anyone anything. Sakura was trying to build a better relationship with the blonde. She stopped insulting him, but would still become an insta-fangirl when Sasuke would talk about anything beside him, at least she became slightly tolerable. He went on multiple missions, a few with Team 7 and a lot with Shizen, to build up some teamwork. On some of the missions, Naruto saves Taki from Suein, a Taki rogue nin. After he retrieves Regine from a rogue nin from Kiri. Sanade was proud that her son was becoming stronger, but Naruto informed several times that Sasuke was becoming spiteful towards the blonde, and it worried him. Because of the mission, Sasuke was better than from clashing his Chidori against the Raijin. Naruto was currently at the hospital, visiting Sasuke alongside Sakura, carrying a bag of tomatoes for the Uchiha. Naruto didn't want to give up on Sasuke, since he was alone just like he was, Sasuke had to realize that revenge wouldn't make him happy. Naruto didn't consider Sasuke a friend, but as a fellow Kanoha comrade, Naruto, the blonde turned to his pink-haired teammate. Did you hear me? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Naruto answered. I was saying, we should ask Sensei to up our training. Sasuke is getting aggravated and we should do something. Sakura said. I've been giving him messages by sending clones to our meetings. Even Ka-chan commented on it, but he's still not changing. Sasuke is the only one who gave a few jutsu from him. Frankly, I don't even consider Kakashi a sensei. Sakura, if you want to become stronger, you should ask for outside help. Naruto said. I understand what you are saying, but... I know you think you're betraying the team Sakura, but you have to realize that a team is formed through a bond, not being forced to work together. So get your act together. Naruto told the pinkette. They both walked into the room and saw Sasuke staring into his blanket. How are you feeling, team? Sasuke's eyes widened and turned to Naruto, giving the blonde a glare. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the look the Avenger was giving him. Sakura looked between the boys with a worried expression. Sasuke Kuen, Naruto, and I brought you some tomatoes so you can feel better. Yeah, I bet it tastes better than hospital food. Naruto joked. Naruto, fight me. Sasuke said out of nowhere. Um, no. You're hurt and need some rest. Naruto replied. I wasn't asking. And I don't care. Naruto responded. You should listen to Naruto, Sasuke Kuen. Sakura told the Uchiha but was ignored. Naruto, I want you to fight me now. Sasuke repeated. And I told you I don't care. Naruto turned to walk away, but then a knife flew by his face, forcing him to stop. Really? You're that desperate? Fine. I'll play your little game. Naruto said without turning around. Sasuke smirked and stepped out of the bed. On the roof. Sasuke said, walking out the room and leading Naruto upstairs, with Sakura slowly following them. When they made it, Sasuke and Naruto stood across from each other. Finally I can put you in your place. What is this about? Naruto asked. It's aggravating. You, the dead last, think you're better than me. Getting stronger, while I remain the same. But now I put you back under me where you belong. Is this what it's about? You're jealous. That's rich. Let me clear one thing. I never thought I was better than you. In fact, as of lately, I never really gave a damn about you. Naruto responded. And why is that? Is it because I'm beneath you and not worth your time? No, it's because you're a selfish asshole who thinks everything is about them. Naruto responded, making Sasuke see that. Now put on your headband. I don't need it. What? I said I don't need it because you won't be able to lay a scratch on my forehead. Sasuke said, activating his Sharingan. It's not about that. I'm saying this is a testament to fighting on equal terms as a Kanona Ni. Naruto said, There you go, acting all high and mighty. Well, I'm sick of it. Now let's begin. Sasuke said, No. Naruto responded, turning around and walking towards the edge of the building. If you are not going to listen to me, I have no reason to fight you. Sasuke fumed at this and charged the blonde. He threw a punch towards the back of the blonde's head, but Naruto tilted his head, dodging the attack. Naruto elbowed Sasuke's stomach and kicked him back into the clothes hanging on the roof. Really? You're that petty? Shut up and just fight. Sasuke said, charging the blonde. Once Sasuke got close to Naruto, the Sinjuera made a CLS clone, who uppercut the Uchiha. 
Naruto jumped up and went for a roundhouse kick, but fortunately for Sasuke, he was able to block it. Sasuke then started to send multiple punches and kicks towards the blonde, but Naruto blocked them all with ease. Sasuke was pissed and jumped going through some hand signs that Naruto recognized. Sasuke stopped. Sakura yelled, also recognizing the hand signs. Naruto is going to get hurt. Naruto smirked and went through some hand signs with one hand, surprising his teammates. Katan, Gokaku no Jutsu. Swayun, Suijin Hiki. Naruto created a wall of water from his mouth, blocking Sasuke's fireball. You know one-handed Jutsu? Sasuke asked with a hint of anger. Not a lot. Only low-ranking Jutsu, and it prevents people from copying my moves. Naruto said. Sasuke was furious. Naruto was beating him, outsmarting him, and humiliating him. Enough. Sasuke jumped in the air and charged a Chidori, enraging Naruto. Are you really doing this shit again? Naruto yelled. He was pissed because he told Sasuke that Jutsu was meant for killing, and he was using it again. Sasuke really didn't care about him at all, even if he lived. Fine. Naruto held out his hand, and a spiral of chakra was starting to form, shocking Sasuke and Sakura. What jutsu is that? Sasuke thought. What kind of jutsu is that? I can feel and see his chakra. Naruto, what's going on? Sakura asked herself. You're done, Naruto. Sasuke said, diving towards Naruto. Naruto was about to unleash his attack until he felt two chakra signatures. He smiled and canceled his jutsu, surprising his teammates. Sasuke was then pinned to the ground by Shizen. Kakashi arrived shortly after. I didn't even sense or see Shizen move. Kakashi thought before turning to Naruto. Naruto, I'm surprised at your actions. To unleash a Rasengan towards Sasuke. You are not ready for Chunin if you can't control yourself. Well, I guess you stop being a Jonin since you're so blind. Shizen commented, disapproving of Kakashi's decision. Kakashi was surprised at the words, which the medic noticed. Why the confused look? Should have Naruto Kuen let himself get hit by your jutsu? Naruto should have walked away. Kakashi argued back. He tried that, but then the Uchiha tried to attack him from behind. I also witnessed Sasuke throwing a knife towards Naruto when he refused the first time. Shizen said. Naruto was shocked that Shizen witnessed that as well. She's becoming good at stealth. I also held back. Naruto said, cutting in. What do you mean? Kakashi asked. Naruto Kuen can make the Rasengan bigger. At the size it was at, it would have fractured Sasuke's arm at the most. Shizen answered for the blonde. Naruto nodded and recreated the Rasengan and made it bigger and shrunk it. See Kakashi, your favoritism is awful. You were supposed to treat your students like equals but you favored one over the others. I'm ashamed. Shizen said, glaring at Kakashi, then turned to Naruto with a warm smile. How about some ramen, Naruto Kuen? Naruto, Ginma and Shizen were doing border patrol after Naruto's bout with his teammate. Sanade was thinking about giving Sasuke a mental exam and talking to Kakashi about putting a leash on Sasuke. I didn't think this mission would be this exhausting, Ginma said. Eh, hey, kind of boring, Naruto said. Well, you could do Kage Bunch and Ginma retorted with a smirk. So can Shizen-chan, Naruto said with a smirk, looking at his crush. Don't bring me into this, Shizen said. Naruto chuckled before narrowing his eyes and looking in a direction. Sasuke left the village with people dressed like Orochimaru. They just destroyed my clone. How many are there? Gimma asked. Counting Sasuke, five. Naruto said. They're low Jonin. I say we go and stop them. If Orochimaru gets his hands on Sasuke's body, he'll be too strong. Shizen suggested. Gimma, report to Lady Hokage, while Naruto and I pursue them. Gimma nodded. Be careful you two. Gimma said before jumping away. So I eat this and that's it? Sasuke said, holding some pills. That's what we said. Once you eat this, we'll seal you into this. Sakan said, holding a cylinder crate. Sasuke stared at the pills, but before he could eat it, a blur went past him and took the pills. Didn't anyone tell you not to take candy from strangers? The sound for and Sasuke turned to the source of the voice and saw Naruto standing upside down on a branch. What are you doing here, Naruto? Sasuke asked, glaring at the blonde. That should be my question, Uchiha. You are with Shinobi with very familiar looking headbands, and you will explain or. Naruto put his hand on the hilt of his sword and K. I started to come out of Naruto and was targeting the five Nin. The area was surrounded with black fog, confusing the five Nin. What is that black fog? Kadamura asked himself, looking around. Enough of this? Sakan said before jumping towards the blonde. I kill this brat. 
Naruto just free fall and let himself, and let himself get struck by Sakan. The moment Naruto was struck, he exploded, and the black fog followed along creating a bigger explosion. The sound for and Sasuke flew in different direction. Naruto vs. Sasuke, Tayuya and Jirobo. Tayuya, Jirobo, and Sasuke slid against the ground, Tayuya and Jirobo in stage one form, while Naruto landed in front of them. Come on, how about you two hand over the traitor and I won't kill you? Screw you, we have a job to do. That's so, emo prick, let's get this over with. Tayuya said. Women shouldn't speak like that. Jirobo responded. Don't tell me what to do. Sasuke said, activating his Sharingan. Naruto chuckled. Three on one? All right, let's see what I can do. Naruto disappeared from sight and appeared in front of Tayuya and kicked her, sending her flying. Sasuke rushed the blonde and threw a punch, but Naruto caught it and hit Sasuke chin with his elbow and kicked him. Naruto started to hear the sound of a flute and got dizzy, then he was covered by an earth dome. What the hell? Naruto said before he felt his chakra being drained. Thanks for the chakra, pipsqueak. Jirobo said. Damn it. Naruto formed the Rasengan and tried to blow up the dome but it reformed. Jirobo smirked, he was in his second stage form. I'm feeding off your chakra. You can't break through the barrier. Tayuya, take the brat. I got this. Tayuya nodded. Here ass lips, eat this and I'll put you in the ceiling container. There's no time to explain. Sasuke seethed but nodded. He ate the pill and went into the basket. After Tayuya sealed it off, she left. Shizen stands on the opposite side of her opponents, analyzing them. Why do we have to fight this weakling? Sakan asked. Why don't you handle her? Kadamara said. Shizen narrowed her eyes and pulled out her daggers. She had to be cautious, but from what she could tell, these two were cocky. The opponent with multiple hands might be the most dangerous. He looks like a spider. Is this an indication of his abilities? Let's test this out. Adding some wind to her heels, she charged forward at the spider freak and slashed down. Kadamara uses his arm to block, shocking Shizen. She was even more surprised when her blad clashed and his skin felt like armor. Do you like that? I can create web-like fluids from my pores and harden around my skin like armor. So your spider-like appearance is not just for show. Shizen said, adding wind chakra to the daggers, cutting skin. Kadamaru got worried and jumped back. Shizen smirked as Kadamaru jumped back. You're dead. I don't think so. Sakan appeared behind Shizen and went for a slash with his kanai. Shizen blocked and retaliated with a slash of her own. Sakan caught her wrist and smirked. Now the fun begins. Shizen was confused and jumped back just in case he tried something. When she turned to him, she noticed that Sakan's extra head was missing. Hey, looking for someone? Shizen turned her head and found an extra head on her shoulder. Hey there. Good job, Yukon. Sakan said, smirking. You see, my brother and I have the ability to attach ourselves to our opponent and take control of their body. I see. Shizen said with a smirk. Then this will be an easy battle. I'm the worst opponent for you. Shizen said, confusing the three. What are you, huh? Ugh. What's happening? Yukon asked on Shizen's shoulder then he started to scream in pain. Yukon, what's the matter? Sakan asked as Yukon walked out of Shizen's body. Shizen charged Sakan, who activated the second stage of his curse mark. Shizen went for a reverse slash at Sakan. Sakan tried to block with the kanai, but Shizen dragon daggers cut through it. Kadamaru, a little help, huh? Sakan paused when he saw Kadamaru clutching arm. Sakan dashed towards Yukon and absorbed him in his body. Rest, brother. I'll finish her. Oh, but you won't. You see, I have a bloodline that allows me to spread, control, and create multiple types of poison through my body. Since your brother went through my body and into yours, you can guess what's going to happen. Shizen said. Sakan's eyes widened and then he felt his insides burn. He decided to activate the curse seal, hoping the DNA of Orochimaru could neutralize the poison. Unfortunately for him, the poison started to spread faster through his system. What is going on? Chakra poison and dragon saliva of the poison dragon. I'm still getting used to it, but the more chakra you use, the faster you die. But don't worry, I won't let you suffer. Shizen reigns on the brothers and guillotine their heads off. She looked over her shoulder and saw Kadamura dead on the ground. Now I can help naruto -kun. An interesting ability. Shizen turned and saw a woman she had never seen before. But unfortunately, my ability counters yours, the woman said before engulfing Shizen in darkness. Where am I? Naruto said, floating on the sea. He looked up and saw the golden ball from before. Oh, I must be in my mind. I need to get out and stop Sasuke. 
He looked down and saw the sea getting lower. That fat shit is draining my chakra. I'll leave you a gift. He heard the fox's voice. Naruto looked up at the light and reached forward towards it. The gold chakra started to wrap around Naruto's body before his body glowed gold. In the land of hot springs, Jiraiya was giggling like a pervert as he spied on the kunoichis from the bottom. He then felt his hand start to burn and look at his palm. Three? But how is that possible? The gaki said the fox is gone. Looks like I have to cut my research off and head back. Jirobo was smirking as he felt the blonde chakra almost gone. What? Jirobo said as the dome started to shake. What's going on? The dome started to release a gold light before it exploded. Jirobo stood there trying to see through the dust and when it cleared, Naruto was standing there with gold chakra outlining his body and gold slit eyes. This feels nice? Naruto said calmly. Jirobo charged Naruto with a punch, but Naruto caught it with ease. You must be one of those one-trick pony fodder. I don't have time to find out. Naruto grabbed his sword and sliced through Jirobo horizontally. Naruto looked to the direction where Tayuya went and jumped towards the direction. What? Sanade yelled at Ginma. You're telling me the Uchiha left the village. Then Naruto and Shizen went after them. Ginma nodded. I knew he was a flight risk. Bring me Shikamaru Nara now. Ginma disappeared. Sanade turned to the window and had a worried look on her face. Sochi, Shizen. Please, make it back safe. I don't want to imagine what could happen to you. Damn, that's wrong. Naruto said, staring at the body of Taiyuya who had bones pierced through her body. Blonde shit, head. Taiyuya mumbled with a blank look. Kill the bone loser for me. He betrayed me. Naruto didn't know what to say, but if Sasuke was this guy, he'd be killing two birds with one sword. Sure, Red. Maybe in another life we can be friends. Yeah. Taiyuya chuckled. And I'll be screwing your... Taiyuya couldn't finish as she died. Naruto frowned at the girl. She was about his age and to die like this. No one deserves this. Naruto said as he continued forward. He soon felt Sasuke's chakra and another and saw someone dressed like Orochimaru carrying a basket. Naruto sped forward, drawing his blade as he left a trail of gold. Kimamaro was headed to his lord, carrying Sasuke after disposing of Taiyuya for being laid as punishment. His eyes widened as his danger senses went off, and he summoned a bone sword from his palm, blocking an attack from Naruto. They landed in an empty field of grass, eyeing each other. I thought Jirobo would have dealt with you. That fat stain never stood a chance now. Were you the one that killed the redhead? Naruto asked. Are you speaking of Taiyuya? Yes, it was her punishment for keeping Lord Orochimaru waiting. Kimamaro said. I see, well then, I guess you'll die. Naruto said. And what angers you about her death? Kimamaro asked. I'm a good judge of character. Out of all your goons, she was the only one who had pure eyes. I bet she didn't even want to be with you guys. Naruto said. You were right. I caught her a couple times trying to escape but was severely punished. She was ungrateful that Orochimaru allowed her to have his gift. Regardless of how today when I was going to kill her. Kimamaro said. You see, I hate traitors and monsters like you. I'll avenge her death even if she was an enemy. Naruto said before charging Kimamaro in blinding speed, shocking the bone user. He was able to defend himself with his blade but was pushed back. I see, you're capable. Kimamaro said before activating stage one and dashing at Naruto. Naruto met him halfway and started trading swings at a rapid speed. Naruto used his free hand and shot a chain out of it, wrapping around Kimamaro. He pulled on his leg, making the sound mean trip as Naruto brought his blade down. Kimamaro shot bones out his fingers, making Naruto stop his attack and turned his blade sideways to defend against the attack. Naruto jumped away before sheathing his sword and going through some hand signs. Fire style. Dragon Flame Jutsu. Naruto shot flame out of his mouth, covering the sound mean. Naruto landed on the ground and kept some distance. Impressive. Kimamaro said, standing in the same spot. Skin burned a bit. Thanks, now let's continue. Naruto said, charging the bone user again. Naruto went in for a punch, but Kimamaro blocked it with his bone blade. Kimamaro went for a kick, but Naruto grabbed his leg and tossed him in the air. Naruto made a CLS clone and formed a Rasengan. Kimamaro crossed his arms to block, but his bones almost crack at the power of Naruto's jutsu. Kimamaro collected himself in the air and coughed up some blood. You are very strong and this might be the end for me. Since my death is guaranteed, I might as well go all out. Kimamaro activated the stage 2 of the curse mark and grew a tail and some bone spikes on his back. Now let's end this quickly. You'll die trying, Naruto said, flaring his gold chakra. 
Kimimaro charged Naruto and pulled out two bone swords from his hand. Naruto sheathed his sword and went through some hand signs. Wind style, wind dragon bullet. Naruto shot air bullets towards the Kagaya, but Kimimaro dodged it with no problem and went in for a jab at Naruto. Naruto pulled out his sword and used the body of the blade to block. Chameleon dance. Kimimaro started to jab at the blonde at rapid speed. Naruto took some hits on the side of his body, but the gold chakra healed him. Kimimaro narrowed his eyes. That gold chakra of yours, it heals you instantly while boosting your attack power and speed. Very peculiar. It was a gift, and I can tell by the blood coming from your mouth, you're ill and don't have much time left. So in honor of your strength, I'll end this in one attack. Naruto said, pointing his sword at Kimimaro. Fine, I am a man of pride. Kimimaro said, forming a lance around his right arm. May I have your name? Naruto sent you. Naruto responds, forming wind around his blade. Kimimaro Kagaya. The two stood still as the wind blew a light breeze, then ran towards each other. Wind Dragon Lance. Naruto called as a swirl of wind formed around his sword, taking the shape of a dragon. Kimimaro thrust his lance towards Naruto's blade. When Naruto's blade met Kimimaro's bone lance, his lance cracked then he was pierced through the chest. A piece of the bone fragment hit Naruto in the shoulder, but he ignored it. Looks like you won. Kimimaro said as he deactivated his curse mark and died. Yeah, it was a good fight. Naruto said as he walked towards the casket. I wouldn't touch that if I were you. Naruto turned around and saw a woman with a fan hairstyle, wearing a green one-sleeve kimono with a flower on the side and shorts. Who are you? Naruto said, pointing his sword at Giren. It seems Orochimaru-sama's information was right. You have become a threat, and to beat Kimimaro is no easy feat, even though he was handicapped. I'm Giren of Odo, and I am here to retrieve Orochimaru's new body. Giren said. Well, that's too bad. I'm here to take him back or kill him since he's a traitor. Either way, Orochimaru is not getting his hands on Sasuke. Naruto said, pointing his sword at the casket. Like I said before, I wouldn't do that if I were you. You're no match for me, but I'll make you a deal. Giren said, summoning a crystal from underground, and to his surprise, Shizen was in it with multiple wounds. Shizen Chan. Naruto called out. I'll let you have the girl and let you live, in return. You hand that casket over to me, Giren said. Naruto gritted his teeth, he had to choose. Either to stop Orochimaru or save his new precious person. Giren saw this and decided to add something. Don't worry, Orochimaru-sama cannot perform the body-switching jutsu for three years. You'll have time to save your friend. He's not my friend, he's a traitor, and it's not about saving him. It's about stopping a madman from getting stronger and destroying the village in the future. Naruto said. Then make your choice, even if you kill him. I'll kill you, and the girl. We all can walk away happy, and you'll still have time. Sounds like a fair dash, Giren didn't get to finish because the casket popped open and Sasuke emerged with dark colored skin. This is the power I craved. Sasuke said, laughing maniacally. Sasuke Uchiha, I was sent to escort you to Orochimaru. Giren said. Sasuke turned to her, reverting to his normal form. Then take me to him, Sasuke ordered. Naruto glared at the Uchiha and charged him, pinning him to the ground. Sasuke, you have one chance to- Did you forget my offer? Giren cut in, placing her hand on the crystal Shizen was in. You let me take Sasuke, and you have her. Sasuke glared at the Shotun user. I don't need your help. Don't be a fool, you cannot defeat him as he is. Giren said, earning a hateful glare from the Uchiha. And you, Naruto. Make your choice. Fine, take the traitor, but the next time I see you too. You're dead. Naruto said, sheathing his sword and stepping away from his former teammate. Smart choice. Giren said. Fine, but I'll defeat you one day. Sasuke said. And to make sure you take me seriously. Sasuke made a chi dori and thrust it in Naruto's shoulder, causing him to scream in pain. Giren released Shizen and walked towards Sasuke, then looked down at Naruto. I made do of my promise. Naruto-sama and Shizen-sama. Sasuke and Giren looked up to see Tiamat sending fireballs in their direction. Giren created a crystal shield, but to her shock, it was destroyed. She grabbed Sasuke and jumped away. Tiamat looked at the two and frowned. Sorry, Tiamat. I failed. Naruto said. Tiamat rubbed Naruto's cheek and smiled. It's fine. You save Shizen. Us dragons respect loyalty. I'll bring you two to my world and heal you. Naruto nodded as Tiamat reverse summoned them into the dragon domain. Tsunade was worried. She sent Shikamaru to aid Naruto and Shizen, but he and his team returned without the two. 
Shikamaru reported that there were bodies of the Sound 4 and Kimamaro, but he couldn't find Naruto nor Shizen. Sochi, Shizen. Please be okay. Sanade Haim. Sanade turned to see Jiraiya sitting at the window seal. How are things? Jiraiya? Where the hell have you been? Sanade asked in anger. You've been ignoring me and now you showed up out of nowhere. Sorry, but I didn't think I was needed, so I was checking on the Akatsuki and doing some research. Jiraiya said, stepping in the office. I came here because I got notified of something. Jiraiya showed Sanade his palm that had a three on it. This is a chakra measurer for when the Gaki uses the fox chakra. A while ago, this appeared on my hand indicating he used three tails worth of power, but the fox is supposed to be gone. It is, Sanade said. Inoichi and Hayashi checked, but they did say there was some gold chakra in him. Jiraiya adopted a thinking position. It seems Naruto has access to the Kyuubi's chakra without the influence. I figure, but you don't have anything to worry about, Sanade said. You don't understand. The Akatsuki might still try to capture him to see if they could abstract it, Jiraiya said in a serious tone. And again, you have nothing to worry about. Naruto Kuen will be ready when the time comes. Sanade said in confidence, making Jiraiya confused. Haim, he needs help. Right now, he's unprepared and untrained. Jiraiya said. You're wrong. Plus, why do you care? When I tried to call you a few months ago, you ignored me, and you removed him from the Toad contract. Do you know how upset he was? Sanade said with an angry tone. I'm sorry, but I thought since he didn't have the QB, he wouldn't need it. I was going to have him train in the village then in a few years, I was going to return. Jiraiya said then remembered something. And what do you mean I was wrong about him being untrained? Dot. Sanade folded her arms under her breast and smiled in pride. Well, while you were gone, Naruto went through an amazing improvement and after two months of training, he beat all the rookies with no effort. He mastered his chakra control and started his affinity training. Jiraiya was surprised and smiled. Wow, the Gaki has been training. It'll make it easier for what I planned for him. And what do you have planned for him? Both Sanin turned and saw Shizen appear with Tiamat. Shizen was covered in bandages. Shizen. Sanade ran towards the raven hair and hugged her. Where's Sochi? Shizen stepped back and sighed. He saved my life, but he's okay. He's in the spring healing. Shizen explained what happened and Tiamat jumped in and explained what she saw when she arrived. I'm sorry, if I was aware. Maybe things could have been different. It's not your fault. I'm just glad you two are okay. Sanade said. Well, who is this? Jiraiya said, walking to Tiamat. Pervert, if you step a centimeter close to me, I'm burning your manhood. Tiamat said, causing Jiraiya to shiver. Sanade smiled at the threat. Now Jiraiya, you said you have a plan? Jiraiya coughed in his palm and turned to the Hokage. Yes, I was planning on taking the Gaki on a three-year training trip. He'll need to learn how to harness his new chakra. Shizen narrowed her eyes at the toad Sanmi. Did you leave because Naruto lost the fox? Were you upset at that because I remember you looked upset when Naruto Kuen first mentioned it? Shizen said. Sanade's eyes widened and turned to Jiraiya. Was that the reason, Jiraiya? Jiraiya sighed and nodded. I was kinda upset. I was supposed to train him into using the fox chakra and when he lost it, I thought I lost an opportunity. So you removed him from the contract. Shizen said in a dangerous tone. Yes, but things have changed. I'll apologize and have him resign the contract. Jiraiya said. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but someone already took him on as an apprentice. Sanade said with a smirk, making Jiraiya's eyes widen in shock. You'll have to ask them. Okay, who are they? I'll let them know of the situation. Jiraiya said, then noticed how the three females smirked. Well, the answer is no. Jiraiya turned to Shizen in confusion. I'm his sensei, and he's my apprentice. Really? You're the reason he was able to beat his classmates. Jiraiya asked before looking at her chest. Did her chest get bigger? And promoted to Chunin. Naruto Kuen, eyes up here. This is only for Naruto Kuen. Shizen said, then blush after she realized what she just said. She noticed Sanade and Tiamat sending her a teasing smirk. Anyway, Naruto Kuen is the best student anyone can ask for. Plus, it's too late for him to sign a contract. Tiamat said, gaining Jiraiya's attention. After you removed him, I approached him and Shizen and allowed them to sign the dragon contract. But don't worry, I'll train him for three years in my domain. With Sanade sama permission, of course. What? But he was supposed to be with the Toads, Jiraiya said. And who was it that removed him? Sanade asked, making Jiraiya flinch. Shizen and Tiamat helped Naruto more than you, Kakashi, and Aruka combined. 
You had your chance and failed. But Haim, he needs me. Jiraiya begged. Not any more plus he knows about his father and you. Sonate said, making Jiraiya worried. Sonate turned to Tiamat. I'll allow you to train Sochi and Shizen. Give him my regards. Sonate said before hugging Shizen. Take care. I want you to come back stronger than me and Jiraiya. Jiraiya scoffed. Yeah right, she won't surpass me. Tiamat smirked. Well, it'll be a good test of skill when she returns. I'll see you in three years, Sonate sama pervert. The dragon leader said before reverse summoning the two. Jiraiya looked down in shame and reverse summons himself to let the toads know about Naruto. Happy birthday, Naruto. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button, subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content. Click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.